Hello everybody, this is Maniac Full Tricks. I'm here with a very special kind of video and kind of running down my own thoughts as to this interesting discussion in the LEGO community. So, LEGO is celebrating the company's 90th anniversary next year, 2022. And they have just released a special opportunity for LEGO fans on their LEGO Ideas website, which says it's a fan vote. Help celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Lego Group. Now, this is similar. This is actually a bit different, actually, from the 80th anniversary we saw only a couple of years ago in 2018. Right off the bat, Lego has anniversaries set for all different kinds of things. They're not just celebrating about the company. They're not just celebrating about a specific Lego line. They do all different kinds of stuff when it feels when it feels right, basically. So 2018, they celebrated the 40th anniversary of the LEGO minifigure, when that was first created and released as an articulated figure. I should also mention in there, because technically minifigures were available before that, but they didn't have faces, they didn't have moving arms or legs. So the articulated minifigure that we know today was in 1978. LEGO also celebrated that year their 80th anniversary, no, 60th. 60th anniversary. Yes, 60th year of the break. I remember now. I'm I'm good with Lego stuff. <laughs> Their 60th anniversary of the Lego brick. The patent for the automatic binding brick was created in 1958. That is not the 60th anniversary of the company. So when they say 90th year, that's where that map comes from. It's about when Lego started developing as a toy company. And um, similar anniversaries have been held for different things over the years and before that. I remember back in 2008 when they had the 50th anniversary of the brick. They've had anniversaries even recently for LEGO Technic, uh, celebrating 40 years in 2017. They had an anniversary for LEGO Star Wars, 20 years. Um, they've had an anniversary, I think, of 10 years for LEGO Star Wars. They've had a, um, well, this year they have 10th anniversary of Ninjago. So they do celebrate different things in different years and drumming up, you know, different products for that celebration. This is about the company itself celebrating 90 years. They started in 1932 as a toy company converting from the carpentry business. So, um, there's a lot more details in here. I'm not going to read the entire thing through, but they've created a list of 30 classic Lego themes to choose from. There will be two different rounds of voting. This is the first round that's now available in which you have the opportunity to vote amongst three different Lego themes for a Lego set to be created in 2022 based on that theme. It doesn't say necessarily it's going to be a, um, a complete one-to-one -one model or, or a remaster. It doesn't, it, basically, in here it says, to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Lego group, help us choose a classic theme to be reimagined as a single new product for the 2022 of Lego Adult Portfolio. That is important information because Lego Adult Portfolio, it means it's going to be a larger set that will be released. It is something that is going to appeal to the adult audience because a lot of things that are actually mentioned in here are ones that adults nowadays would have grown up with back when they were released. Um, and it says that it's reimagined as a single product. It doesn't say that they're going to take a specific Lego set from there and recreate it. They're probably just going to have the aesthetic and the function and some of the design work you know, built into it, but could still be a brand new thing on its own. Example, Benny Spaceship 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 from the Lego movie is a reimagining of classic space. Yes, it does borrow elements from other sets like the Galaxy Explorer, but it does not necessarily say it's the new Galaxy Explorer. You know what I mean? So things like that is what I would expect out of this contest when the product is released. In the first round, you can vote up to three different things, one vote on each theme, and uh, the vote will be 100% transparent. 
So they're going to say what the results are at the end of that voting session. The second vote will be the top three themes from the first vote. So they're narrowing it down from 30 to three. One of the three themes will be the theme the 90th anniversary set will be based on. This vote will not be transparent, so it's still a little bit of a secret. So basically, they're not going to say what the results are until the set is launched, basically. And I'm sure that they would take in a bit of the information from the other LEGO themes and figure out something else. If they're going to celebrate the 90th anniversary of LEGO as a theme or as a, as a company, they're going to do more than just one big adult-oriented set. They would definitely create other things, probably some promotions, you know, to go along with it. The way they celebrate other thing, other anniversaries, I would definitely see this one in the same light, where it's going to be other products or other promotions um, coming out in 2022. So let's see. Uh, it will be, you know, the voting is taking place from the 17th of January to the 25th of January for the first round. And then the second round will start on February 3rd to February 10th. So that gives you roughly a week window for each of these voting sessions. That's why I brought the link down to the below and the link in the, uh, the comments, the chats, uh, so that you can get to this as quick as possible. If you do want to vote on this, you do have to have a Lego Ideas account, which can be linked through things like Google, Facebook, or if you already have one on the Lego Club website, you can use that. That's what I've used. That's what I've had for a long time when voting for other Lego Ideas projects. So, uh, let me see. They have a link in here that explains about how to cast your vote. And we've even had some pretty pictures of you know, what you're voting for. These things include. So I don't imagine that the pictures are reflective of what the like. It's just to give you an idea as to what you can vote on. It's like, what, what does this entail? You know? So here I'm just going to give my thoughts on these as what I think the community will vote for what my personal taste in it is, and what kind of anniversary set I could see potentially out of it if it was going to be a thing. And that's not, again, to knock out anybody's votes. Vote however you like, whatever your preference is. If you want to share it with other people, feel free to share it. If you don't, that's all your business. No problem with that. And just because I harp on something doesn't mean I hate you as a person. I just don't connect with it. Just know that going into it. I'm sure there's plenty of fans for all of these categories. So let's keep it civil in the comments. So Lego trains. Lego doesn't forget about their trains. They use them sparingly over the years, but we still get train sets. It's not a thing that I don't think that we'd have to worry about on a commemorative set because they will continue making trains and they are making them better and better over time. We get ones from City every couple of years. We just got one for Crocodile Locomotive from Ideas, which is a really impressive model for the, for the look of it. Um, I could definitely see people voting for trains, maybe trying to get a more impressive model out of it. But personally, I... I did not vote for this one, but I don't dislike trains either. I think they're still really cool. I think they're still very you know, prominent, especially the adult Lego hobby. But it's something that I could definitely see still happening either way. They, they're still going to make Lego trains, and they're still going to make them really good. If they did make an anniversary set for Lego trains, again, I don't want to lean on the crutch of making a set with brand new parts or new building techniques, I would think that they would probably come up with a train. I don't think they would do one that's based on a real Lego train or a, a real train in real life, because on here, BNSF is a real uh, official train, you know, something that they would basically have to pay licensing for in using the, the, you know, the designs, the color schemes, you know, making it look like a real 
like Frank. I can't see them doing the same thing with that if they did make a commemorative model. Maybe they would. Maybe they would stretch out a little bit further. But I don't know enough about trains in order to say how they would do so. What kind of train that would represent. And if it was, I'm sure that it would be something along the lines of a steam engine, maybe a passenger train, something that would be very easy for people to adapt into their Lego cities and cart people around, have ability to use it um, with other, you know, patrons, with other Lego minifigures. Like, I wouldn't see it being a cargo train or a crocodile locomotive, which is also a cargo train. Because, as that is interesting to many LEGO fans and train enthusiasts, it's not the kind of thing that would demonstrate a lot of play. It's like you would need other trains to do that. You would need a whole arrangement around the trains, whereas something like a steam train or a passenger train could ride around freely just as, as its own model. And, of course, track. LEGO Town. I don't have a strong feeling that people would vote Lego Town. I don't think this is the kind of thing that people would be like, oh yeah, I definitely want to see a commemorative Lego Town set. I mean, if you're counting classic, because when I think Lego Town, I think Lego City, I think World City, I think all those things under the same map. Town is such a large line from Lego that while it does have charm, while it does have some older sets that that stick with people, that are memorable, it's the kind of thing that's very everyday. You know, the kind of thing that you would expect LEGO to keep up with, you know, because it's just based on real life. It doesn't have to be a specific brand or anything, but I don't I don't feel strongly with this one. I did not vote for this either. I don't imagine a lot of LEGO fans, adult LEGO fans, would be voting for this one, especially compared to the other ones on the list. I think that's the other thing about it. They'd probably choose something else over this one. And if they did have one for LEGO Town, I would say they would probably pick something that might be... The first thing that came to my mind, again, I don't want to completely lean on this, but the first thing that came to my mind was something like Main Street, Revival. Or something in the style of Main Street, where it's like you get a couple of buildings, maybe close to modular scale, maybe at the modular scale itself. Maybe something like Assembly Square, where you get a massive set as a whole bunch of city buildings with different areas to play inside of that you can present different shops, uh, apartments, uh, alleyways, you know, walkways, maybe a little bit of you know street decoration. That's the kind of thing I would think of, but I feel like would be such a drastic difference from town when everybody thinks of town and they think of stuff like this. I don't know how it would work. I feel like part of the charm of town is in its simplicity, that it doesn't need a massive amount of pieces to create something unique, and create something memorable. Next, we go to Classic Space. Every time that LEGO has an anniversary, Classic Space is mentioned something. And even the periods in between anniversaries, Classic Space is acknowledged. I mean, they just released a set last year from Creator, and then this year from Creator, that show a astronaut and a android that have the Classic Space logo on them. They also had Series 21 that has a space police figure which we'll talk about a little bit later. Classic Space, even though they don't have many sets for it nowadays, is still acknowledged. It's still a prolific part of LEGO. So people would definitely vote for this, probably in the hopes of seeing something in the Classic Space era aesthetic, but with modern techniques. Me personally, I think that would be really cool. I would definitely be interested in that, but not as interested as other entries on this list. And... We already kind of got that, like I said earlier, about uh, Benny Spaceship, 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 and Benny Space Squad, both from the Lego Movie 1 and 2, respectively. Those represent space in a modern era with modern building techniques, with modern pieces, very well. 
It's one of my favorite LEGO sets of all time, that is Spaceship, 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 because it combines the aesthetic of the old and the building techniques of the new and still being a good-sized spaceship on its own, not having to be completely a crutch as representing something like the one they show here, Galaxy Explorer. So I think it would still be an impressive set. I think it would be its own outstanding model. Perhaps they could make a moon base with it. That would be nice. But I, I could see this happening, but it's also not too necessary because LEGO knows this. LEGO is well aware and they take pride in their original space themes. You know, the, the history that it is involved with. Maybe not making too many original space themes nowadays with Star Wars, but they still carry the, you know, the rocket ship around the moon logo very well. Classic Castle, it comes up every once in a while when it comes to references. And you'll even see further Castle examples down in this list. So I wouldn't completely harp on those right now. But if we're talking like this early instance of Castle, I could see people getting excited for this. I mean, we did have a reference to Yellow Castle, this 375, in the 60th anniversary. There was a miniature model of it built in a gift with purchase set. And if the, I could definitely see people getting on board with this, but again, might be a hard thing to choose compared to other castle factions that are on this list. That's the interesting thing about um, space and castle is that many, many sub themes were released and many of them are included to fill out this 30 entry list. So if there's anything specifically that you liked about them, a specific function or aesthetic, you're probably going to lean towards those than just the umbrella category of classic space or classic castle. That being said, I would be interested in this. I did not vote for this myself, but I think it would be a cool thing to see. And if they did make something out of this, I think it would be... I don't know. I'm going to actually look up how Classic Castle is defined according to Brickset to see if there is a... Um, where the limit is drawn. Okay, so we got like the red, white shields. So um, according to Brickset, it's only maybe like eight sets. Some of them are just minifigure packs. So take it or leave it if you want to call that a set. Um, the Yellow Castle is definitely one of the most prolific from then. And there's like a King's Joust. we released two different, actually several different numbers of them. Yeah, two different numbers. There we go. Uh, nice Procession also had two different numbers. It was a, it was a short one. And, and Yellow Castle, once again, two different numbers. So it's, it's kind of a short... If you look at it in a more technical way, yeah, it's pretty short. But Classic Castle is usually an umbrella term when people talk about it. Or a lot of other themes that are down further in this list. And I feel like if they did something like this... There's not a lot of material to draw from because you basically have three sets and some of them that were re-released. If you had something to combine all of them, maybe. I don't know if they would try to do something new with it, especially when we just when we're just about to get the blacksmith shop from ideas. It would kind of take that away from it, of you know, of a concept for a castle set. Maybe maybe doing a medieval market street which they did many years ago, but haven't done anything since then in other castle themes, perhaps could work here. Um, maybe they could do a yellow castle again. You know, to actually identify this is classic castle. You know, keep the yellow color to it, but upgrade the kind of shaping it would have, the floors, the rooms, the weaponry, whatever the case may be. It would be kind of neat if they had the uh, horses brick-built, like they did in the Roman Colosseum, which I found kind of interesting, that they were brick-built. And those, again, had some upgrades as to how they were sloped, how they were sculpted. Um, but yeah, as far as this goes, I basically see a combination of those classic castle sets. You have a yellow castle with some knights in a procession of some kind of cart or um, 
packages and maybe some jousting area to go along with it. Um, if they may, maybe they could do something more than that, but there's so little material in Classic Castle to work from, from what I can see. Lion Knights. Here we go. We're getting more specific now. Lion Knights is one I often forget about as a classic castle sub theme. I um, it it is one with the beloved Guarded Inn, which was one of the legend sets, which was one of the re-releases Lego had over the years. And these sets do go together kind of nicely. I'd say they're actually an improved version and expanded version of what we saw in the um, the previous line in, in Classic Castle. And this was basically a, a one to follow it. If I remember correctly, this may also include Crusaders? Maybe not. Not entirely sure. It does give you a lot of different things to choose from in here. However, we have had something very similar in a VIP promotion several years ago that was also acknowledging older LEGO themes. There was a cart, a siege cart, that was built and actually fired. I feel like that's um, that does well. You know, I, I don't have that personally, but still gets the point across very well. As far as these other ones are looking, I... Again, I, I haven't heard from a lot of LEGO fans when they talk about Castle, they talk about this one, Lion Knight specifically. I'm sure people like the Guarded Inn, but they may not talk about the entirety of the luck. And maybe there's stuff there. I'm sure there's an audience for it, but it's not one I can see getting a huge, um, a huge vote. If they did something with this, they do have a King's Castle in here, which does look impressive. That's also the one they show um, as the picture, but what's this king's castle? And you know, when I'm trying to look at these castle themes, as you'll see later on, I want to see that they have an aesthetic to the castle itself that carries along as well as the suits of the figures. The suits, yeah, you could stick them just about anywhere, but the castle, if it's this, almost looks too plain. It almost looks like you could put any castle faction in here. And it could work. That might be charmful, that might be useful, but it doesn't make it feel like this lived in its own thing. Maybe the, the charm with this one can be the fact that you have a whole bunch of these castle battlements that have an additional area built into them. So like there's a blacksmith shop, there was a siege tower, you had the guarded inn, of course. That's uh, you know, these are all things that are kind of like built within the castle walls that can somewhat, you know combined with each other. And then you had a couple of horse-drawn ch uh, chariots, buggies, carts. That's what I'm looking at in here. A couple of boats, but um, I don't know. I don't feel too strongly with this one. I'm trying to see the potential as to what that might present. And it's kind of, kind of difficult to work with to make it stand out as lion mites. Black Falcons is a prolific one for a lot of A-Falls. A lot of castle fans will recognize Black Falcons right out the gate. The actual castle gate. <laughs> and this one has a little bit more character from what I can tell than Lion Knights. It still has a lot of the gray stone texture that uh, the, the Lion Knights do. But the figures also stand out a little bit better. And some of the buildings work a little bit better in there. So I actually, again, I'm pulling up your brick set on the side here. You can see a couple more differences, a little more character, a little more structure with each of these. The battering ram compared to the siege tower in the previous one. I can tell those I can tell those sets and vehicles apart from each other. Um, there's again not a lot of sets in here for either of them. There are two different kinds of Black Falcon castles from what I'm looking at, which I find kind of interesting. And I think this one is has potential, but I don't think it's going to be a hard, a hard um, vote for a lot of fans. Yes, they would like to see Castle again. Maybe they would like to see it in Black Falcons, but again, we are getting the Blacksmith Shop that includes Black Falcons minifigures. If you're up on that, you'll 
you won't even have to worry about voting it as much. Maybe you want to see more out of it. Maybe. Me personally did not vote. Model Team. So for those who don't know, Model Team was like the creator expert series that you see nowadays. Large overscaled versions of Lego vehicles. Ones that are somewhat based on real life. Nowadays you see a lot of them with licenses like the Aston Martin from James Bond. You have um, the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. You know, those kinds of bigger vehicles made out of system parts. The one they show in here, most people call the Black Cat 5571, is cool. And there are definitely some other cool ones. I've tried Model Team. I have a, I've tried at least one of those sets. The Sea Jet. Oh, there's also the Hot Rod. That one is a was the one many people know. Hot Rod Blue Fury, whatever you call it. Um, and again, I know this one has its fans. I'm sure they enjoy it. But I can't imagine choosing this as a commemoration of LEGO that they wouldn't do otherwise. They would definitely make something like this on their own at some other point. Probably will have a license with it as opposed to just being its own vehicle, as being its own standalone uh, model, hence model team. But there's still there's a bunch of good things in here, that's for sure. I'm looking across the pictures of them. They have some interesting color schemes, they have massive tires and again upscaled versions so you can get a lot more detail. You get a lot more um, some of these actually show steering in them. That's actually pretty cool. If you did something like that nowadays, you would definitely have a bit more technical oriented stuff in there for the steering mechanisms, for maybe some functions opening, probably doors, um, panels, maybe the back, maybe adding uh, furniture in there. I don't know. You could probably have something. I don't know why the first thing that comes to my head would be like a car back in that can work as a convertible, you know, so you could take the roof off and make it more sporty looking and put the roof back on it. Um, maybe you could have something like a, I don't want to say a minivan, but, but like an SUV or, or something like, you know, minivan, SUV, something that's inwards uh, convertible. So like you could have the seats folding or reclining and things like that. Um, other good examples of recent note, the Volkswagen Beetle, the Volkswagen Camper Bus, those are also along the same lines. The Fiat, that one came out one, like one or two years ago. Um, the Harley Davidson bike, I think that counts. So, again, something that LEGO is still making. Yes, most of them have a license attached to it to make it, you know, a more official version of a car or bike or something like those. I'm sure it has its fans. I've definitely seen people at uh, Brickford, Alabama 2020 before everything went down. Um, they had a whole table of these laid out, and it was actually pretty cool to see. But again, I don't think it's going to rock the boat, even for adults. Forest Men, I think, is going to have some uh, contention. So Forest Men, the classic castle theme, sub-theme of castle. I think that one's actually really neat. And I think there are people who really enjoy Forest Men. Um, nowadays, you know, it's still not really been remade. We've, we've seen like one or two minifigures in the minifigure series, but that was over 10 years ago. We've seen Forest Men acknowledged as a part of Lego history as a magnet. I know because I have the magnet for it. Um, some things, I think they call it Dark Force as well. But yeah, in, in the Lego ideas, they just call it Force Men. So, there you go. Um, I think it's I think it's got something there. There's a little bit of unique style to it, where you could have things that are built within trees as small castle battlements. Um, the closest real life, or the, the closest recent example I could think of that could apply to that would be like the treehouse from ideas where you have a large uh, natural structure that has you know man-made uh, things inside of it you know they got these little huts for tree inside of the tree itself 
but Dark Forest, Forestman, or whatever you call it, is pretty short-lived. So it may be interesting, it may be in that classic realm that people can think of, but I don't know if it's going to have a huge draw for people because they're so limited. There's so few sets on it. Even if they interacted with some other ones, they have other things like Dragon Masters in here in one of the sets, if I recall correctly. If they did something like this, I, I did go for this one here. If they did something like this for an 90th anniversary set, I would imagine it would be one to two large trees that have some kind of cave structure to it, perhaps, and building a castle out of natural structures like that. That's kind of the pride of Dark Forest, is that it's building it out of the natural environment. That that they're kind of like these little hideaway places that um, nobody can be found in. And, you know, kind of surprise oncoming uh, castle factions. I'm going to look in here for just one minute before I go to the next one, just to be sure. Oh, Forceman is another. Oh. Oh, that's a more, that's a more classic one I'm thinking of. Yeah, okay, that. Okay, again, kind of works in a similar way where if you have castle battlements that are built within natural surroundings. In this one, I'm looking at one here, Forceman's Crossing, that has a large black tree, and then a castle that's, uh, connected to it by a bridge, have a little waterway underneath. Again, not a lot of sets in this one. I'm counting about seven, according to Brick Set. And they're still kind of neat. Horseman's River Cross is another good example of building it inside of the tree itself. I mean, it's still prolific, but it works. Horseman's Hideout, that's a lot more uh, inconspicuous. Camouflage Outpost. I mean, it's within the name. They have like a large block or something that, that pushes out of the way for people to go in and out of the uh, structure. And I bet, yes, that would look really cool or something equivalent to that. Would look really cool in the down the anniversary set. Blacktron. People love Blacktron. When you look at classic base scenes, Blacktron definitely comes up. I don't know if people are voting based on Generation 1 or Generation 2 Blacktron because some people divide between them. Some people like one more than the other. There are different color schemes between them. At least from the picture they're showing here, they're going with the original. The generation one. And you have black, yellow, transparent red, transparent yellow as part of the color series. Okay, that would be neat. That would definitely be cool. And there were a handful of black fun sets. There were also some incorporated into Space Police. Um, they made references to them years later. So there was something to enjoy there, and there's definitely potential for something really cool. I would say if they did something like that, it would probably make a large spaceship that has a lot of modular parts to it. One of the charms of the original Blacktron, other than the color scheme, and this carried over into Blacktron 2 for a little bit, is that the ships would have ways of separating so that you can actually make them into multiple ships. I think there's one or two in here that you can recombine them to a larger vehicle from like, a series of other ones. It has potential based on those things. Um, and, you know, adding on more stuff that you find nowadays in space. Maybe different different missiles that can be fired or like a holding cell or something like that. Um, I'm looking for the... I'm, I'm honestly looking... I don't know why the Blacktron 2 ones came up um, before all the Blacktron 1 ones did. But yeah. Uh, now, okay, now in the mall, um, they have a variety of vehicles. They have a lot of interesting stuff that they can work from. And again, I would say that that is one of their strong suits is that they have this modular look to them. Uh, where you can separate the vehicles and make them as like a smaller pod or combine it with other things and make something, you know, more menacing. And I think they could really pull off menacing with uh, a modern thing. But I do not vote. Black Knights, I sometimes forget about this one. 
This one blends in pretty well with uh, other castle themes because the castle structure is not much to write home about. I'm sorry. This is from what I'm looking at. The thing that stands out to me are the faction, like the elements, the symbols. The shields are mainly because the uh, older castle themes around this time, they kind of change between each other as far as armor goes. So the only really way that you could tell is by a flag or by a shield, maybe by some of the faces. They do have some sets in here that interact with uh, falcons. So that is kind of cool. Again, one of these sets that kind of intermingle with each other. This is where we get the Black Monarch stuff, Black Monarch's Castle, Black Monarch's Ghost. They have basically this this darker look to a lot of the castle structures. So if they did this nowadays, they'd add black in there like they did back then. They'd probably add some dark bluish gray. They'd probably add I don't know. I don't. I don't know why. I could see like dark hand maybe in some areas, maybe, like for a little weakness in the walls. But uh, but yeah, black falcon or black knights, black castles. I don't know of it among other Lego fans or even other castle enthusiasts how it stacks up. But I personally, eh, it's okay. Pirates. Everybody likes pirates. <laughs> a lot of Lego fans enjoy pirates. There have been multiple generations of pirates over the years. And I'm at the point now with pirates where I I still enjoy them. I still enjoy if they bring it back at any point. 2009 was the pirates that I grew up with personally. Well, I didn't know of the ones beforehand. I thought, okay, they're cool, but I can't own them. They, they have discontinued. Um, some of the ones that they had in 2015, that's still a while after the 2009 ones, and it's still a while from what we have nowadays. But we did also get a whole bunch of pirates stuff recently. You had one that was basically referring to the original generation of pirates with the idea set, the Barracuda Bay. And that's a really impressive set. I don't own it yet, but I would love to. And it really takes the cake for a pirate model and a revamp with it. It didn't have to, but it did, and it did it very well, recreating the Black Seas Barracuda. Then you have the Creator pirate ship that came out the same year. A brick-built ship did not need to rely on a unitary hull, and it looks pretty good. Again, it's a set I don't own, but would like to own at some point. And I like it. I, I think it's, again, a really neat thing. Pirates, to me, does not always have to be uh, available as a theme. It is good to have every couple years or so, like we've seen this um, trend of them. But you can still have one ship or so every few years, and that will still satisfy people. One of the, most, one of the biggest draws of pirates is the ships. I've definitely seen it because I, I've seen people in Lego shops or with Lego displays, they put the ships together. They like the way they look, they like the way they're structured, they like the changes in cabins and you know sails and things like that. I don't know how well that works with all the other sets, with the soldier forts, with the arsenals, with the you know the smaller ships. So I would be okay if pirates did not make it in for this one. Lego does know how much pirates means. They've made a classic pirate minifigure gift for purchase in 2015, and they had the, the pirate scene last return. And yeah, they, they definitely could do stuff pirate themed every so often. I think they've done that in Creator too. A couple of years ago, they had like a pirate themed treehouse, like 2018, 2019, or something like that. Um, so it's not again, it's not something forgotten. It's gonna be massively popular. I could definitely see people voting for this. I did not vote for this one, but I'd be happy if it still existed. If they made a set for it, it would probably be a ship or an Imperial base. It's gotta be one of those two things. I don't think a ship wreck 
would be a useful thing. I mean, it does stand out from 2009, but I don't think there's enough of it that would make it stand out from the idea set. There's also a shipwreck. It's kind of the hard thing about it. They just released some a year ago in 2020. So how are they going to, you know, create a new pirates thing for the adult market that would separate itself from two recent pirate ships? You know, that's that's a tough, that's a tough and tall order. Islanders, even though it was a part of pirates, I don't think is going to be the thing they would focus on, aside from the depiction of natives. Uh, which is definitely something that you don't want to steer into. I think the I think they would just stick with the imperial stuff. It's just easier to adapt into. A lot of their stuff has been imperial based or or Spanish armada based. So that would be the way they would go with that. It would be cool if they had some sort of island that they could invent a whole bunch of traps. You know, uh, different. You know, passageways, little hidden treasures here and there. Potential for that is definitely there. That would be a lot of fun as its own set. But if somebody was getting a pirate set, I don't think they would be thinking of that first, of the pirate treasure hunt aspect. They would be thinking of the sea. They would be thinking of boats. They would be thinking of the boats. They would be thinking of invading ports, like a soldier's fort. 6242 is my favorite Lego set of all time. So, I love Pirates. I love that set. I could definitely see something like that. Some kind of Imperial port uh, being the most likely case. If they, if they had that. What was Lego thinking with their 90th anniversary sets? They haven't. <laughs> Bionicle Forever, Bionicle Live Bust. Definitely. What is your opinion of Bionicle Wings? I will get to that. Don't worry. Um, Dave Frost wants to see here as well. Sorry, I didn't catch up on the chat before. Imperials! Pirates! They're literally the same thing. I mean, I put them together in my head, and I think a lot of LEGO websites and databases do that too. They will put them together as one team. Maybe at the time they were separate things, had a separate banner to them, whatever the case may be. But by now, we kind of put it all together as pirates. So, literally everything I just said for pirates applies to imperials. Space police. This one shows first generation space police. We've got three generations now. If I had to say there is one that stands out from them and stands out amongst uh, space themes in general, Space Police 3 is very kind of muddled in a color scheme compared to other space themes. You know, Galaxy Squad comes to mind, some of the Futuron stuff comes to mind, and they're not bad for what it is, but if you had it as a standalone set and saying this is based on the old Lego theme called Space Police, it would probably be the first, it would probably be the first color scheme that they would go from, again, very recognizable. But they would have the black, blue, and transparent red. They'd include maybe a black Tron figure or two as a prisoner. You would have the semi-Futron style of torsos with them. You did have that in Series 21, getting a figure for it, and an easily massable figure at that too, although five blocks each. It's still a really cool modern design of Space Police 1, so I do, I do commend it for that. I do have all Series 21 now, so I do really enjoy that figure. Probably one of the best out of the series, in my opinion. Would people vote on this? I think they would. I think people would definitely want to see more Space Police. I've definitely heard that clamor for quite some time. People enjoyed the Space Police lines. I don't know of people enjoying Space Police 2 as much as they enjoy 1 and 3, which I find kind of interesting. I don't know if they're out there and I just haven't met them, but... From, from interacting with the community, that's what I've understood, and if they did something Space Police 1, it's like a lot of space sets. It's a lot of space themes. They would make a spaceship. That's a prolific thing. Space theme is a spaceship, or a space port. Um, space Police 1 did not necessarily have a space port, from what I remember. 
they did have the large spaceship that they show her here, and they had a lot of smaller ships. I really do like the mechanism that they have for having the, um, what do you call it? I do like the mechanisms that they use in here for the, uh, the prison cells. And I think a very similar thing had been done a long time after. I want to say uh, the Space Police, no, Super Secret Police Dropship is something that reminds me of it in, um, in the Lego Movie series. This one, I don't know if, it would, if it's um, a kind of thing that would have to completely re revamp and change everything as far as building techniques to use nowadays. Um, especially for how those prison cells attach. Maybe they come up with something better. Maybe they come up with something, you know, still keeping that look, but changing it up a bit. Maybe they'll just make a, a clear piece that has red bars printed on it instead of having physical red bars. Okay, so they do have a base here. Lockup isolation base. It looks so skeletal, though. Like, yeah, I can tell where things are supposed to go in it, but there's so many gaps, and there's not a lot of room for doing stuff. There's all these tiny platforms all over the place, and you get one small ship and one prison cell that you can move maybe two places. I don't know. It's not doing a lot. I do remember the Mission Commander. I have tried to build that one before. I don't personally own it now. And a lot of the interior of it, it did, it did have an interesting function on how it complete, it, how it kind of like expanded the model. But a lot of the interior in this thing was just built for that function. You couldn't actually walk through corridors or have multiple positions for things, like you did a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, it would it would be either some kind of spaceship or some kind of base. And I would actually like to see some kind of space police base because they don't have a lot of those across all three generations. I mentioned the isolation chamber. There's parts of the solar snooper that you could count, but I don't think it would count entirely. There's the, was it galactic mediator? I don't remember what the interior of that was like. If there actually is walkable space, you know, between prison cells or to do other things. And Space Police 3 is probably the most shining example, from my memory, with Space Police Central. A walkable area that you could have some training, you have prison cells, you have little areas for these scooters, you've got a garage for a vehicle, and you've got like a little um, interrogation area, you know, all these kinds of things to make it feel like a proper base, to make it feel like a, a whole depot. So, I don't know. Um, and I personally did not vote for this one. I think it would be cool to see, but a little bit lower on my list, personally. Mtron, I think the hardest thing to have for Mtron is the M. You don't have Mtron without magnets. You can get the color scheme down. There's a lot of people who enjoy Mtron building. They have Mtron mocks. However, Mtron is not Mtron without magnets. The M is for it. So, LEGO doesn't make magnets as frequently as they used to. They don't make these kinds of magnets anymore, except for maybe trains. Uh, they did have magnets in LEGO City recently, but they're pretty massive pieces and only made basically for that year and only for a couple of sets. Not even that many uh, city police sets offered. So... I think people are fans of Mtron. I think they would be interested in seeing an Mtron set, but I don't think it would be a great enough choice or something that would actually stand out much. Again, I'm gonna go to the Space Police argument and other space themes argument. It's gonna be a spaceship or some kind of operable base. They never had a stationary base. They've just had a whole bunch of mobile bases. Which I think is kind of a cool thing to tell it apart a bit more from other space themes other than the colors. However, I don't know how much can be done with that that hasn't already been done. Magnacore, um, uh, Megacore Magnetizer, I can't say that one, is huge. Big tires, big wheels. I mean, yeah, it's the same thing. 
big wheels, big windscreen. I feel like if they did something like this nowadays, obviously they wouldn't use those parts, but they would probably go, you know, just about big, maybe a little bit less. A whole lot of the other ones that they have in here, there's one that always reminds me of a helicopter because of the way the top of it is positioned. Particle ironizer. I feel like if they did something more with the magnets and Mtron aspect of it, it would be some kind of investigative lab. It would be some kind of research facility that's transporting materials back and forth. Secret Space Voyager is a combo model, I think. Although it does look kind of cool for what it shows here. It's still like... Yeah, these are all rover. These are all rovers or spaceships. They're all on the move. Maybe that's the other reason it's called Mtron. It's moving. And uh, without the magnets, I don't see a strong case for it. Wolfpack. Wolfpack is kind of niche for the castle theme, from what I've understood. But many people know of it, so I don't think it's that, you know. Harmful. I don't, I don't think it's like a big of a problem, but there aren't a lot of sets available for it. There is technically one or two from Knight's Kingdom. There's a keychain of Weevil that has a um, a logo on there, the wolf pack, an emblem. But as far as the sets released at the time go, they're not the castle. There's only one castle model, first of all. The other ones, there's like the small tree, which could easily go into Forest Men because it's a black tree with a moving structure that, you know, you hide away. That's Forest Men. That's Dark Forest. You've got Wolfpack Renegades. It's a wagon. It's got a lot of blue, some red, some black. A lot of castle themes have blue wagons, caravans, something like this. Maybe not the same exact style or the same exact size to it, but basically the same. And then Wolfpack Tower, it's like one of the earlier castle themes all over again. It's got some, it's got the light gray for stone, yep. It's got the black, it's got red roofs, and it, it, if you put this next to some of the other castle sets, you wouldn't be able to tell much difference. Maybe like a few things here and there, but honestly, it's hard for this one to stand out because there's so few sets and not enough character outside of the, the figures themselves. Okay, just for one moment, I have to adjust myself. Oops. There we go. I just shift myself around in place for a moment. And back. There we go. I think people do enjoy it. I think it's still a cool kind of castle theme, a cool outlook, but they are they are small, they are niche. I don't know how much can be done with that or how many could actually vote for it. I personally did not vote for it. And if they did do something, I feel like they would try to make it more creative, to make it stand out from other castle things, but it would have to push into a new direction. It would have to be something that's similar to what's been done, but also new enough because there's so little material to work from. My take, and I think this might be cool if I ever made a mock of it, because I do have some Wolfpack um, figures and accessories, I think it would be cool to make a stone rock in the shape of a wolf's mouth, like a wolf's head, and then have maybe like a chain or two that can pull the mouth open to actually walk inside of there. And then have maybe a couple of traps, have a couple of moving rock structures, like as a secret escape, maybe a battering wall. Um, maybe it could have a, a walkway over some water, maybe a, maybe a, a prison or something, kind of your standard fare of castle stuff but in a way to make it feel more devious. They are kind of a more devious group, even though they're kind of small, um, but, they, but they'd be cunning. That's the, that's the thing I think would stand out. 
Also, I think it would be cool if they used the wolf heads from Legends of Chief. Because that would adapt more into like the, the feral look of them. The, the uncanny, or not uncanny, the un... It, it would make them stand out a bit more as castle figures. Let me look up the wolves to see how much of the minifigure face it covers. Honestly, I don't even know if they have a mold for it anymore, or would even think of using a mold like it. That's the other thing I didn't think about before, but if they would make new parts for it. I'm sure by 2022 there would be new Lego elements in general sets. I don't know if they would go to the extent of having new ones for this commemorative set. That might be a bit much. Or not. I don't know. They, they might pull the stops. So looking at the wolf figures from Legend of Chima, it covers all of the minifigure head. So maybe something like that could work. But it could also be overkill. Um, trying to have a minifigure, like a human like minifigure, wearing a wolf's head over their, you know, along with their armor and everything. I was trying to think if there was maybe, if they made a new mold, it could be one that kind of masks around the head itself. You still get to see the face of the knight. And then has maybe some teeth hanging over like so. So it still creates that wolf shape, but doesn't cover the, the face. Doesn't cover their expression as much as the uh, as Legends of Chima does. Legend of Legend, welcome to the stream. Paradiso. I like Paradiso because it has a very 90s feel. It's got some bright pastel colors. It's got beachfront properties and all different kinds of recreation. There's a lot of really fun stuff with Paradiso. I would love to see Lego City tackle Paradiso. It is definitely one of those kinds of town themes that Lego City could bring out in a summer wave. Perfect timing. Summer. Duh. Um, they could have a whole bunch of sets that are like maybe with a a small hotel, a beach house, some water skis, water sports. They they kind of leaned into it with the people pack because they had a beach people pack with like volleyball, excuse me, with volleyball, with a lifeguard stand, a bunch of things. They've done a little bit of it before with the marina from Lego City many years before that. So I think there's potential that if Paradisa wanted to be a thing again. Lego City could tackle it. Okay? Lego City could definitely do stuff with it. I think one of the most prolific things that, that adult fans remember from Paradiso are the colors. The pastel colors are really, really standing out because not many other Lego teams at that time used them. It was basically one of the first, if not the first, to use a very bright green. It has its own kind of pink. That's why people will refer to it as Paradiso Pink. It's one that they don't make anymore. They have a dark pink now and a magenta, which would probably be the modern adaptation if it was used. Um, they do have bright yellowish green, and I think that would still be available for a theme like this to create something out of it. Would it be a high, a high winner? I don't think so. Again, with a lot of other contenders on the list, even though it does have a very vacation-y vibe. Um, even if they had like a cafe or something like, what was it? The Breezeway Cafe, you know, something like that. Even though that wasn't technically part of, um, Paradisa, but could still get that, they get vacation -y vibe to it. Poolside Paradise. There we go. I, I'm pulling it up now on the side. Uh, they have like a horse ranch in this theme. It was marketed as a girl's theme because of the pinks and again, Bright colors. Um, not the same green from what I'm seeing is still used in here, but the yellowish green, the ghoulish green, as I call it, that they use nowadays would probably be the closest um, capturing it. They have an island arcade, which is like a little amusement rides. Um, Paradise, Paradise Playground from Paradisa. 
what to say. There's like a sandbox in here. They have a baby with a stroller, uh, just a baby stroller, no baby included. Um, they have a slide, they have a seesaw, like a little playground. That's actually pretty cool. Um, let's see, Cabana Beach. I don't have any of the parodies it sets, except for maybe one of them. And the Seaside Cabana is a small one. It's still kind of cool. It still has some good colors in there. The one they show here is probably one of the most prolific. Dolphin Point. When people think of Paradisa, they think of that one. Um, there's a couple of small ones in here. Country Club. Okay, that would be that was pretty neat. It also has a very unique kind of baby fall in there. Um, also, Carriage Ride has the same fall. I think it's only those two sets. And um, yeah, a lot of horse-based stuff. I. Don't know. Oh yeah, they have magenta in here too, so that, that would actually work uh, very well. There's a fun fair set again, more amusement park related stuff. There's a seaside holiday cottage with a big slide and um, what looks like a paddle boat. That's pretty neat. There's a little more a really small set I'm looking at right now. But yeah, between these. I mean, again, I don't think it's going to be a huge one that people are going to vote on. I don't expect that. I do really enjoy this, but I do not vote on it personally. Um, if they did win, I could definitely see potential in making, dare I say, another LEGO Lighthouse. LEGO does like their lighthouses, and they've made many of them through city, creator, and friends over the years, and maybe once or twice stretching into something else. A Paradiso Lighthouse would be a very cool one to see. Especially if we combine some of those magentas um, and greens to add to it. But I'm also seeing a lot of sets that are based on some kind of resort, some kind of cafe, some kind of horseback riding. So maybe maybe a stable? I don't know. I, I feel like Paradisa is strongest when you think about the beach. So it might be a little bit more like a beach cafe or beach amusement park, beach playground. Um, or, like I said, the, the aforementioned lighthouse. It'll be on the beach or pretty close to the beach. I think Paradisa does have the potential that if it wanted to return as a sub theme for Lego City for a summer wave or so, it'd be really cool to do that. And, and again, adapting a lot of those modern colors. And, I, and here's the other thing I want to say about it. I don't think it would take away from Friends too much. It might borrow a couple things, it might repeat a little bit of ground, but Friends has also been diverse enough that if they did replicate something that they've done before, it's usually a good period of part. So I think there's still enough room that they, something like that could happen and not intervene with Friends as that. Dragon Knights. Dragon Knights is one that stands out a bit more to me, not just on the figures, but on the, the um, castles itself. I think that works. It could be one that A-Falls would look into that might be very popular, because when you think of Dragon Knights, that's probably the closest example in here that we have to Fantasy Castle. You know, castle, dragons, they go together very nicely. Adding some magic in there, why not? These actually have a bit more black in them with trims of yellow. That's usually printed pieces. I don't know if LEGO would do the same thing or they would just kind of embellish decoration on top of the black with other yellow pieces. Um, these, these do stand out a little bit more. There's also a bunch of them that are built kind of nature-like, forest-like. There are some of them that are built in the shape of dragons. Um, so that's, that's full on its own merit. And then, let's see. If they... There's also some red roofing I see in here. Some other castle themes have that as well, but that could carry itself pretty nicely. You do have the Dark Dragon's Den, which is basically a large cave and can house a dragon inside of there with the castle battlement on top of it. Kind of in the similar vein as Dark Forest and Forest Men. If 
Fire Breathing Fortress is the one that they show on the site. This is basically a castle that's built on top of a structure with the dragon sitting inside again like a cave and having a dragon head on the side of it. I don't remember if that the one in this set can actually drop things from its mouth, but that would be a cool function for it to have. Um, you could probably even make a semi-mechanical dragon. I mean, obviously the dragon mold in this set and then this line and similar lines like this have uh, that's been discontinued. So maybe they could have an actual brick built dragon like in Elves or Ninjago and still have a castle structure to go with it that might make it stand out. So I'm going to look right now, I'm going to try to look for one of the more recent castle themes where they used knights that, you know, have control of dragons. I don't want to say that they're dragon knights because. They are different things. Um, just trying to find the right year for it. I think it was 2013. Yep, it was uh, 2013 into 2014. They were castle dragons. I don't think they have a specific name for this faction, for this for this line of them, because the bad guys have dragons, the good guys have, have, have lions, as far as emblems go. They still got the dark color scheme down between the black and the red, the dark gray, the some browns, reddish brown, dark brown. Um, carries itself nicely. Did they use a new horse mold? Oh no, there's like a new horse armor piece. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Dragon Mountain, there we go. So that's the, the one that comes to my mind. If I were to think of a set they could make from this, they would have a brick-built dragon, so a little bit more structure to it than the, the prefab dragon that they have in this set. But the castle could be something similar to that, maybe a bit bigger. Maybe if they leaned into, I want to say, the previous Dragon Knights from the Kingdoms line. That one could also work. Prison Tower Rescue, fine example of a castle from that that could be adapted into Dragon Knight color scheme. Change all the green, the dark greens and golds into reds, blacks, maybe a couple other things here and there. And that gateway area could be where the dragon is, but you'd still have a way of getting up there by the ladder and then having a staircase wrapping around maybe two other floors of it. Maybe a little um, prison cell, because I think some of I think one or two of the Dragon Knight sets they did have other factions built into it, or those factions facing other other ones. So yeah, there's there's potential with it. I did not vote for it personally. Ice Planet, kind of again, just like Mtron, we've seen Lego themes that reinvigorate the mock potential. For those kinds of things. Uh, Atlantis, when that came out, it had a whole lot of new parts for red and transparent green, even though it was a different kind of green, that worked for Mtron mock building. Ice Planet, same thing happened when Nexo Knights released. A lot of transparent neon orange came out of that theme and welcomed itself greatly with the blue and some white and light bluish gray in the color scheme to make itself like another ice planet. I mean, you know, it was still its own castle theme, but it had the, you know, the technological aspect, the color scheme that could, um, that could fit with ice planet mock building. I think an ice planet set would be cool, no pun intended. Ice planet is still a popular theme for a lot of eight falls. So that one has potential. And it would actually really be funny if Ice Planet 2002 had an Ice Planet 2022 set 20 years later. I wouldn't say 20 years of Ice Planet because it only was released inside of one year in 1993. But I mean, on in 1994, 1998, apparently there's, there's a poly bag of it from Brick set accordingly. Um, it's a pretty short-lived space line. That's the thing that Lego had back then. A lot of their, a lot of these cash, 
uh, Castle and Space Lines, they only made like a couple of sets that would last for a bit longer. They didn't flesh them out as much as they do nowadays with, uh, with the given Lego theme because they knew these are all space. You could put these things together with other space themes, you know, to interact. It's not a big deal. But with uh, with this one, I think they would, especially considering they had Blacktron interfering, they had Space Police interfering, especially through commercials and catalogs. None of the sets actually offered that. These basically stand on their own as far as minifigure assortment goes. But it would still be cool if they were, again, pun intended, it would be a neat thing if they had those added in, even as a figure. Like they could literally make a a rock wall or avalanche of some kind for a ice planet base that a prisoner would be kept trapped in, you know, like like actually trapping them within snow or something like that. Maybe some laser bars if you may, um, or from the other side of it, laser bars. This one did have a use of magnets, but not all the time. From what it looks like, it's kind of again kind of like Mtron. They used the magnets for transporting things or a little bit of research here and there. They had a couple of these satellites. They had a couple of these like little rockets and things for some kind of research. I don't know the exact, if there was any real story elements added to Ice Planet as a recording of this, but that's something that could you know go together. They didn't have any androids. They had them all as astronauts, and I feel like an android would work well with this if they wanted to add something new into the mix. Ice Planet, I think, could have potential compared to other space themes. Um, it's something I would be interested in seeing, but something that I did not vote on. And I think there's some potential in making a set for it. Even though there's only a handful of sets that they made back then, mostly relating to sleds or things with sleds as landing gear for like spaceships. Um, they have a few rovers, and they do have like a larger spaceship. And, and, and an operable base, I think you could come up with something out of that. I think even if you had something like a base with a rover, maybe a sled vehicle, and some of these rockets instead of a, a full spaceship, maybe even like a smaller spaceship could eject from here, that might work. And especially with the, the transion orange color scheme, um, being familiar to people, that's that's one way to look at it. So uh, where are we? We're about halfway down the list. Aqua Zone, Aqua Zone. Even though I don't own a lot of sets from them, I do own a retail display piece. I do own a few of the smaller sets, and I do respect it because Lego could have went into underwater sets through town first, but they didn't. They decided to make an original sci-fi theme underwater. And I don't know how many examples of that exist out there, but I give them credit for pursuing that instead of just, like, the first diving sets were from a fictional theme. It wasn't supposed to look like town. I mean, you had boats up to that point, but you didn't have underwater equipment, if I remember correctly. I'm looking down the list here. 1995 is when AquaZone began. In 1997 or 8, I believe, is when Divers began. The first town Divers. I'm going to look just to be sure. Put my money where my mouth is. Divers, sub-theme of town. It's still loading. Yeah. I was right on the money. 1997, Town Divers. Boom. So they came up with Aqua Zone first, as opposed to, as opposed to Town. That's actually pretty neat that they, that they went that way with it. I, I find that kind of fascinating because you can still use Aqua Zone as a diving theme to some extent, but there are some fantastical elements of that where it already lends itself to to be its own thing, to be its own sci-fi thing. And there is actually a bit of story to it that kind of makes it stand out. 
it's one of those interesting, not too many details, but still bleak in storyline things from Lego, like Rock Raiders. And we'll talk about that later. Aquazone, they are surviving underwater through the use of um, specialized crystals. That's all, all the chrome silver crystals that you see. And basically this theme exploded in chrome. So I feel like it would be a hard thing for them to continue or to, to make something out of that with the chrome because they don't make chrome um, silver pieces as often as they used to, if any, if at all anymore. The closest thing they would do nowadays, I don't know the exact name of it, but I know that they had a very shiny silver crystal that they've used a couple times in the polar themes, in the Arctic themes. Um, give me one moment. I'm sure I can look it up. I just have to look up the color name and see if it's even prolifically used. I don't know if they would ever go the other way with like pearl gold or something. I don't think that would actually work, especially with a yellow and neon yellow um, as part of the, the vehicle color scheme. They do have a pretty bright color scheme. But they do also balance it out with some blues and yeah, transparent blues, um, some black in there. So color scheme wise, it's kind of what you would expect out of a um, out of a diving theme on the on the whole. Usually using yellow because it complements the blue in the background for the ocean. Um, metallic silver. Metallic silver is the technical name that they give it, according to Brick Set, uh, Brick Link. So that would probably be the kind that they would use for a bunch of the accessories, some of the tools, some of the gems, things like that. I'm wearing an Aqua Sharks shirt right now, and I don't have an Aqua Shark set. I think one thing that people enjoy out of Aqua Zone, especially if you're talking original Aqua Zone, the first wave or two, no pun intended, is the Aqua Sharks. They are really cool looking. They have a dark color scheme that really, you know, stands out. A lot of the vehicles have a really unique shape to them. So you got the transparent orange, you got some blue, you got some black, and maybe some red. Yeah, very trace elements of red, but that's an option if you want it. And I feel like it would be cool to have, honestly, an Aqua Shark vehicle more than an Aqua Knot vehicle. Now, Aqua Zone being an umbrella term for the theme, I don't think they would do anything with Aqua Raiders, the mining portion of it that had black, green, trans neon green as part of the color scheme. Maybe a figure, if, if at best, but even so, that might be too much. And then they had the Hydro Knots, which had a cool looking color scheme and kind of swapped out the trans neon orange for transparent green. It kind of looks a little bit better, but I don't think it's as fondly remembered as the Aquanauts are. Not that I know, as far as I know. Um, the Stingrays are pretty cool. They do stand out as a color scheme, and not many other LEGO themes have adapted that in any way of darker gray. Light on uh, trans neon green, red, black, some brown to give it a rustic look to it. And I, the other problem that would be with these later versions of Aqua Zone, especially Hydronauts and a little bit of the Stingrays, the suction cups. I, it's not like you gotta have them, but it is something that does make them stand out a bit more compared to the other. Aquazone sub themes. Ha, huh, sub themes. Submarines. So, I don't. Th there is no modern substitute for what they have for suction cups that I know of. Probably a thing they would just completely ignore if they did that. Um, and pneumatic tubing, again, probably wouldn't do anything with that. Ugh. 
So yeah, I, uh, I I would like it. I would think it would be based on Generation One of the Aquas of the of the uh, Aqua Sharks and Aqua Knots. Probably more likely an Aqua. Um, if they if they put something together with it, if they made one, it would probably be an Aqua Shark vehicle with a smaller Aqua Knot sh uh, submarine. And some that that's one thing that I actually think a lot of diving themes are missing environment. There's not a lot of buildable environments for you to explore, for you to unveil and discover things. They come up every once in a while depending on the theme and the aqua zone stuff, not much. There's like a shark crystal cave, which is literally just to have the shark in it. But it's just a whole bunch of supports and and ladders and gateways. It, there's not really a natural environment to it. You have the Neptune Discovery Lab. Most of the natural environment is made out of raised base plates, which they don't make anymore. You have not much else. They did have a raised base plate in Crystal Crawler, but again, prefabulated piece. Not really going to help. Even. Aqua Raiders did not have anything for you to drill into, despite the fact that they were a mining-based sub-theme, which honestly baffles me. It's like, why, why, why wouldn't you have this? Why wouldn't you have something for me to open up and drill into? Uh, Hydronauts. Mm, only somewhat worked around into the base itself, again, using prefab pieces. And that was like one or two sets. So yeah, unfortunately they don't build a lot of environments, especially in AquaZone, for discovery, which I think is very important. It would be cool to see that. Spireus, on the other hand, has a few of them, but still kind of just works on the vehicles. This one kind of has a color scheme almost reversed from Space Police. It's got transparent blue, especially on the windows and things, canopies, it's got black, it's got red, it's almost like a space version of Aqua Sharks. And I think there are fans of it, I think it's still prolific, I think people definitely remember it. Didn't have a lot of sets, but there were some cool ones in there. A lot of them from Spireus were based around giant mechs. And you know how LEGO likes their giant mechs nowadays, and they could make some really good ones. So. There is potential for this one to be voted on. I did not vote on this one, but I do respect Spireus among the castle theme or among the uh, space themes. I think things like the Salter Scout, kind of a cool design, but I could definitely see something like that done nowadays way better. Because the recon robot, oh wow, there's actually a bunch of them in here. I used to have the Salter Centurion, and I would like to get it again at some point, but not for now. They, they didn't have too many, and they kind of mixed them in with other space themes, especially when it came to advertisements. Um, I don't think any minifigures translated between, the, uh, between lines. It was kind of, oh, well, we got this. Purple Guardian, probably the most uh, recognizable, along with maybe Salter Centurion. Which kind of, kind of looks like a UFO, honestly. Um, but yeah, you, you could definitely get a good mech set out of this one. Because robots, mechs, kind of the, the bread and butter of this theme. The one that keeps coming up in my mind. Especially when you have an android in it. Um, that, that makes some sense. They did have a base. They did have some other little chips. But I think the... Uh, I think the mechs are the way to go. So, yeah. It's got potential, but uh, I did not vote on it. And it would be kind of neat. Explorians, I feel like, would be a little too plain. It's the kind of color scheme that we see nowadays in a lot of space themes. And I'm sorry it doesn't really stand out too much. I do like Explorians. I do like some of the sets. I do own a couple of them. 
but the color scheme it doesn't really sing as big as other space things. It doesn't even sing compared to things in Lake of City. It's got yep, it's got white, it's got black, it's got trans neon green, it's got trans blue. Okay. Not much done there that hasn't been done elsewhere. Space Police 3 is the next one I think of when I think of those colors. And maybe just shy of the trans neon green as far as similarities go. So, Explorians, it does have its fans. It does have some cool mocks that people have built. But I don't know if it's as up there with space themes as other ones. I don't know for sure. And as far as the kind of vehicle, I think there's a bunch of ones you can go from. The, the main thing that Explorians had, as far as a feature, is that they had this sort of x-ray look. You would, uh, you would be able to put a transparent... Or you'd be able to put a tile piece that had red or blue on it over a transparent blue or transparent red object. Usually some kind of panel, a dish, something like that. And with that, you would be able to kind of scan it, kind of understand the human, the alien life that used to be there with it, which is pretty neat. They did have a couple of sets with telescopes because as Explorians, they're just learning about the galaxy. They are just a theme about exploring other places. Explorians. They do have magnets used a couple times, which again, on my magnets argument, if they don't really use them that much outside of city and trains anymore, I don't know what they're going to do with it here. But again, it's not all the time. It's just some of the sets have magnets, just as a treat. I'm counting three, okay, four. Actually, most of them do in some way have them. Even the uh, Starship has two different ways of using them for a vehicle and on the ship itself. I think there is potential for making some kind of base with this one. It does have an android, a couple of astronauts. You could definitely get into some kind of research lab with a detachable rover, maybe a, uh, a ship to go with it. Maybe the ship can actually detach from the rover so you can have it you know, split up and, and cover more ground. That would be the way I look at it. Um, but again, it's the color scheme and it isn't selling me. The holographic stickers are nice, and I would almost consider that part of the color scheme to make it stand out. But Lego doesn't really work on holographic stickers as much as they used to. Some do, but not as much as Explorians has offered. So I don't know how that would actually play into it. I do like the Android base. That one looks cool. I think I have built that one before. Again, not necessarily owning it. But that is cool. They probably put a telescope in as well. So there's that. Oh, time cruisers. Again, I'm sure you have your fans. And I do like it as well as time twisters to some extent. I think Time Twister, if you're looking between the two, they cover the same ground. You have time machines built out of vehicles. They have a whole bunch of elements from other LEGO themes that can be incorporated for hats, for accessories, for different places of travel to some extent. Most, if not all, of the vehicles have a function to them when they move. They will have something that moves along with them, whether it's popping up in the air or rolling along the sides of it, or flapping along like wings. It is cool on those merits and trying to incorporate those things. It's the kind of thing that you wouldn't see again until a long time later. Uh, one that stands out in my mind and probably a lot of other people's minds would be the ghost train from Monster Fighters, where it has a lot of moving parts with it as you roll it around. And similar to the Time Twister train, or Twisted Time Train. Um, Steamboat Willie, same thing. You have a wheel that is spinning around while it's on the cheater wheels. It's got the smokestacks that pop up and down. Uh, those kinds of functions are cool, 
This cam functions are great, and this is the thing that, pri that the theme prides itself on. However, the builds are messy. I can tell you that I've built the Hypno Cruiser easily. I, this, there's a whole section in the front of the Hypno Cruiser that I found a little struggle with, especially with the elastic band. Time Tunnel later, similar thing with the elastic band. It's not a proper connection fitting it in place with the propeller because there's nothing holding it back. If you push that thing forward or leaning it forward, you'll probably pop out the, uh, the propeller itself. Um, yeah, a couple of odd choices as far as shapes and, and structure go for, for building a bunch of these. I mean, you look at the flying time vessel and you're like, that's a hodgepodge. Unless you grew up with it. Magic Mountain Time Lab. Again, another hodgepodge. Because they're trying to incorporate these other LEGO themes into the design of some of these sets, even though they have specific color schemes. You have the good guys that have, uh, they have light gray, black, yellow, and maybe some light transparent blue. Then you have the bad guys, light transparent blue for the wind screens as well but black, blue, neon, uh, orange in their color scheme. Basically, the same colors as Aqua Sharks. Almost exactly the same colors as Aqua Sharks. And then some more brown, just for good measure in there. So, it's, it's, it's over the place. People kind of go one way or the other about it, mostly towards the negative, that it's incongruent, incon incohesive, and things like that. I think it's cool, and I use it, you know, sometimes. I have a couple of the sets from there. Um, a brick set, I think it says I have four of them. So it's a time train, time tunnel later, hypno cruiser, and rocket racer. Yep. So more than half of the theme. But if they made a set out of time cruisers, as much as I like base sets, and I've probably been showing that throughout this whole video. As much as I like base sets, that does not seem to ring with me. They've only made one of them. And I guess if you want to count the time train, kind of sounds like a mobile base. But I'd say if they, they have to stick to the guns, they have to stick to something strong, and that's the cam functions. They would need to have a vehicle that is drivable or flying that when rolled around makes a function happen and those kinds of things are still made nowadays so it's not a problem i still think that probably the closest modern equivalent to these will have are the two-in-one builds from the lego movie sets where you have a whole bunch of vehicles that are recreated in unorthodox ways to make a different kind of vehicle just to be fun with it and that's not and that's not bad. People do like it. People do enjoy that there are other options for them. You know, the garbage truck, the ice cream truck, the uh, the plumbing truck, the the castle. Um, debatably, some of the ones you see in Lego Movie Two are done like that as well. I mean, the um, Metal Beard itself. You have the. Not monster truck, but I'm gonna call it a monster truck for now. Uh, that that Emma and Lucy build. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of things that clash a little bit, but but kind of look cool that they stand out. That they have this, you know, that they have this nature to it. It's this wild nature. That's probably not gonna go too far. Divers, simple. It's boring. Town Divers, I can't say much about this specific era of it, 97, that I wouldn't say the same or better uh, compared to other ones. I think I've already said a lot about it before when I talked about the AquaZone stuff. Um, I've talked about Atlantis before. I thought it was cool. But Town Divers like this, I don't see a personal thing to it that they didn't already do later down the road in other town divers themes. You know, ocean exploration stuff. You know, that, that modern stuff is good. And 
returning to form like this isn't really going to do that much. I do still want to get some of those Zabru theme sets because of the parts at the time. If you're talking about a reimagining of a set, there's not much this wouldn't do that Ocean Explorer Ocean didn't already cover. I mean, you can put some underwater bases in there. You can get some large submarines. You can get some kind of crane to carry boats from, or carry submarines to and from the water. Maybe something like the Discovery Station, where it's like a floating lab, floating x-ray thing. And I, this one actually does have something. This is one thing I do like about it. They add more options. They add more um, sculptures, landscapes, ruins. There is stuff underwater to explore. And they have a couple simple functions or just little smooshable places to go through. Or just, oh, we'll just put this treasure chest behind a rock piece. But it still works. You could still actually go through it and explore it instead of just picking it up. Instead of all the investment going into just the subs. This also happens with ocean exploration. In City, a couple of them show up. Not as many as other themes, though. I do like some of these sets from a nostalgia point of view. But what they do nowadays in, in City is definitely, um, for vehicles, it's better. For landscapes, not as much. But, um, or not as frequently. Would other people enjoy this? Possibly, but I don't think so. If they... If they want a diving theme, I think they would actually lean towards Aquazone because there's a lot more character to it, a lot more to enjoy about it being in fantasy. And especially when we just got ocean exploration stuff, other people will probably be like, I'll just pick those up and be on my way. If there was a set based off of this, I would say it would have some kind of rock wall, some kind of large cave that could be explored, a couple of things and move around with it. A submarine, of course... And if you're lucky, a boat above sea level or some kind of sea lab that um, can work with it. So we're basically looking at at most potential diving exploration, diving expedition explorer. It's got a big landscape for rock wall. It's got a submarine in there to carry treasure, and it's got a big boat to carry the, the things around. Shark cave included. Adventurers. Now we're getting to one I voted on. Actually, Aquazone I voted on before, too. Um, Aquazone was at a close tie with a couple of other LEGO themes in my book. But I would say I, I love my underwater stuff. I wanted to go with Aquazone over Divers. Adventurers was another one that I voted on, and very, very good potential. I know lots of people that love Adventurers. I know lots of people who know Johnny Thunder, whether they were kids growing up with it, whether they were adults that knew about it. Love it. And I know a lot of people loved and enjoyed the references in the Haunted House set from Ideas. Actually, not Ideas. Uh, creator Expert. Actually, not Creator Expert. 18 plus, whatever you want to call it, the haunted house that came out in 2020 was slapping, was fire. It was amazing for a lot of references. It had a lot of character to it and, and trying to incorporate that and still make it look creepy. It still stands out as a creepy gothic house, but it has the addition of being a huge Johnny Thunder um, Easter egg. A whole bunch of them. From Orient Expedition, had some Alpha Team in there, you had Junk Bot, and you had Classic Adventurers. Now, yes, I do think there's potential. People would definitely be interested in that one to see another set for it. I've seen LEGO Ideas. They have a couple of things out there for it, for different models, you know, to try to make into a LEGO set based on Johnny Thunder. I think this would be a real big contender. Within the top 10 at least. But 
like we know, the next round is not going to have 10. It's going to have three or so. Um, as far as a Lego set goes, it's going to be tough. Because Adventurers, I mean, for good thing, Adventurers has explored a whole bunch of different places. And a bunch of the things that I've said before and other themes would easily work into a newer Adventurer set. You have a play set with traps, hidden structures, hidden walls, things that fall over, you know, places to go all throughout a given environment, maybe some vehicles added in for good measure. It's got it. It's really got a lot of play set potential. But I think Desert would be the one they lean to the most compared to the other ones. They had Desert, Amazon Jungle. They had Dino Island. I always forget Dino Island for some reason. I grew up with it. But I always skip over it when I think of them um, in list order. And then they had the Orient Expedition line. So that basically gave you three different environments in one year. It was a great way to top off the theme in one big go. Because you you could have gotten all you could have gotten a whole year in one place. But no, they gave us three of them. And and there's still just enough balance that it felt right. Maybe Everest was a little bit lackluster compared to the other two, but if you count with the other three, we had we had Desert, we had Amazon Jungle, we had Dino Island, we had um, India, we had Everest, and we had China. Six different locations that Adventurers and Orient Expedition have, a, have delved into. There's a lot of potential in there for any of those kinds of places. There isn't really a cohesive way to put them all together unless you made it as a museum of some kind, which would be kind of neat. But I don't think it would be as adventurers if it was a structure. If it has to be out there as an architecture set, as a part of history, as, as, as part of history, as a part of ruins, you know, that kind of exploration feel. But among them, they would probably choose desert. They've covered a lot of desert references inside of the haunted house set. And they know that when people think of Johnny Thunder, they think of desert. They think of the first wave, the one that introduced it. And they had a lot of sets for it too. A lot of different kinds of vehicles, planes, cars. You had different tombs available. Once or twice, a boat, a boat. Just to have like a Nile River sort of thing. And then you had a couple of really prominent temples. Which actually look really nice. You know, Oasis Ambush, Mummy's Tomb, Sphinx Secret Surprise, and Temple of Anubis. Something on the level of Temple of Anubis, but bigger for, for a one time, for, for like a one shot release set would be incredible. You could have a lot of different structures built into it. You could have exploding walls. You could have trap doors. You could have switchable rooms. You could have, you won't get the magnet feature like this one had, but you could work around that so easily with other functions. It would be a joy to build and to play with. It is the kind of thing that I would really love to see. And again, not necessarily replicating that exact structure of Temple of Anubis. You could make a pyramid. This almost looks like a pyramid, but it doesn't claim it to be. And the only pyramid-based Lego set that we had up to this point in Adventurers wasn't really a—it wasn't really a pyramid. You had a whole bunch of tombs that could fit inside of a pyramid. Theoretically, would be part of a bigger structure, but was never a bigger structure. The closest that you had to a pyramid was in the uh, Pharaoh's Quest line. Because the Pharaoh's Quest line, kind of a spiritual successor to Adventurers, still had a good number of sets. Still had a lot of neat things available for it. And one of those things being the Scorpion Pyramid. While it did use a large raised base plate and something on an adult, you know, reimagining level, I'm sure they could build out a larger three, four structure base plate or um, three, four structure pyramid and just cover half of it or something that could work that what they did in here was pretty nice it had different it had 
uh, doors that slide open. It had a bucket that could drop snakes and other traps. Um, again, exploding walls, uh, breakable tomb, um, some good stuff. So I think it would it would work very well. I think there's good contention for adventurers to get up there. If it's not if it's not going to be the set itself, it could be up there. And to make a model based off of it would be great. I'd shoot and I and I harp on this because it's one of my favorite Lego themes of all time. But I also know lots of other people enjoy it as well. Compared to other lines, just to narrow it down. Dino Island, I don't think it's going to be worth it if you don't have dinos. That's it. No matter what structures you make, no matter what vehicles are available, it needs to have dinos. And by this point, I don't know if LEGO would go back into using more dinosaurs outside of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. That's where they've been using them for quite some time. That's where we've gotten a whole bunch of them available. And there's nothing wrong with that. But... If they don't use it, then they would have a buildable dinosaur that you'd have to work into adventurers somehow. Dino Island, in my opinion, is kind of a hard wave to go through, especially if you consider that uh, mantra, that, 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 that model that the other waves before and after it had set. Yes, it's cool to catch dinosaurs, and it's basically the license-free version of um, Jurassic Park. They, they've had dino series after this point that were just catching dinos. They've had dino attack where they're actually defending against mutant lizards, mutant dinos. <laughs> that was a crazy apocalyptic one that actually happened in Dino 2010 for y'all y'all in Europe. Um, but, but Dino Island, without the dinosaurs doesn't have a lot of substance. There's not a lot of places to explore. There's only one or two actual structures, and even as boats and things go, they're for what? Transporting dinosaurs. So I don't think that one's going to hold as strongly. I think Amazon would be okay, would have potential. It could still pull off a lot of the tricks and traps and things that Desert can, I don't think there's anything off the top of my head exclusively that, that they couldn't do. But it was a bit shorter than the Desert Wave that it's hard to imagine what else they would what what else they would do for it, especially as something as forested. I mean the, the last note the last example I can think of would be in the city theme when they had the jungle theme. That was cool. And I was excited because I thought that's basically the spiritual successor to this. And I was actually hoping that it would evolve into something else, maybe have reference to adventurers, maybe have reference to something else. I, I think the first time I saw it, I was kind of foolish, and I thought, oh, maybe it could be like a studio's theme, where it's like you were setting up the stuff as props. It wasn't. It was city. It wasn't going to happen. Although a city movie maker theme would be kind of cool. They actually have backdrops and things, but I don't know how far you could go with that. But that, but City Jungle was interesting. It was something that did stretch out that jungle aspect of Adventurers. It did some incredible things with it, where it had like you know different caves and waterfalls that that creatures could jump out of. So yeah, that 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 could happen. They didn't really have like a large temple or anything. They had some structures, but they weren't much more than like a level or two, maybe yeah, maybe two floors or something that you could investigate, that you could travel through. But as they were more naturally in they were more natural environments than ruins. So it, you know, it didn't really have a lot of the culture aspect, a lot of the you know, what, what civilization was here that we're now exploring aspect to it. Uh, let me skim up here for a little bit for the Orient Expedition sets. I, I As much as I praise that we got three different areas in one year, I also can see by these 
that the sets pretty much covered it as it was. I don't think there's a lot more that they could do that, you know, would have made any one of them last longer. It's like, oh, you can't really have a year of India. You can't really have a year of China. You can't really have a year of Himalayas. It's not a lot for each of those. But putting them all together for the Marco Polo journey is still cool. I also want to mention one more thing for Jungle. Friends Jungle, also good. I've picked up some of those in the past. I've picked up some of those recently. Yes, I am into those. And there are, again, new features that are added to those that weren't available in the Adventurers line that work for its environment. One of my favorite sets from Friends entirely is a jungle-themed set where it has a waterfall. You move a piece out of the way to block the water. It literally slides a gear and function to make a pathway open up underneath the waterfall for a small cave where you have some gems. Brilliant. Simple function. Works at, look, works flawlessly. I love it. I don't remember if I ever reviewed it on my channel, but it was a lot of fun to play with that simple function and to build it. Uh, let's see. So, I feel like you'd, you'd dance around culture with this one. I think it would be difficult to do something China-oriented when they already have a lot of Chinese New Year sets and you have a lot of Ninjago sets and you have a lot of Monkey Kid sets. Adventurers on top of that would be overkill. It would be cool, but it would be overkill. Because a lot of concepts that go between all those themes and maybe once or twice in Minions is going to do nothing original. It's going to pull through a lot to make it stand out that the other themes have not already covered. Um, Everest, there's not a lot of substance to it. It's snow. There's a couple of huts. There's a couple of cabins. But there's not a lot you could do with all of those in mind, at least from my understanding. I'm sure that there's more to it than what is given for the Lego theme. But, yeah, I, I don't know how much more that they could add into that personally that hasn't already been taken care of. India might be a bit stronger than the rest when it comes to flair, when it comes to what can be built out of it. Um, there aren't any other Lego sets that rival it as far as the culture goes. You've got the Taj Mahal probably is the next closest one, but even that is one example. That's just one set on its own and you could still make something that a bit different from that. Again, you might have to watch as to how it's created, again, to not be uh, offensive or anything like that. The sets here did offer some interesting play features. Excuse me. No, it did offer some interesting play features that separated it from other sets in the theme. Um, there were a couple of sets from this and studios that had a, a dropping floor function. So literally, it's just a matter of having a sliding function that you pull out from a structure and all these floorboards in between will fall through. So that's cool. It's something that um, was in Temple of Gloom, which is from Studios, which features Johnny Thunder. I'm looking at Tigera's Roar, which has that function. I'm sure there are other ones and not too many from Adventurers itself, but it's a... But it's a fresh play function. It's something that not a lot of themes have covered, from what I understand, and can still be a fun thing to play with or add in to a larger model. And guess what? It's from India. The Temple of Gloom one is kind of based on desert. You could probably add that into there as well. You could probably take a bunch of stuff I said for desert and Amazon, add it in here. I will say between Amazon and India, you might be a little bit hard-pressed unless you get a whole bunch of functions that really stand out or a bunch of aesthetics that stand out while still being, you know, culturally sensitive. It would be nice to have the return of an elephant though. So yeah, literally an entire breakdown on adventures. Extreme team was a fun thing for the time, but I don't think there's a lot of potential with that one personally. I know there are people who know of it, but I don't think anyone's clamoring for Extreme Team to come back, for any new things out of Extreme Team. 
it's kind of absorbed into city like a lot of other themes and that's basically where it's gonna stay for the most part it'll surprise me if it if it does get an overwhelming amount of votes but it's something that just like racers no longer exists as a solo theme it doesn't exist without city you're gonna see extreme team as extreme sports as off-roaded as the um adventurous dare i say kind of sets that already exist in um other themes that already exist and don't have to make an entire line for it i personally would kind of like to see rescue but i understand that rescue is literally the same thing as coast guard or you know kind of works very similar to medical or police it's the kind of thing that is emergency vehicle based really not gonna be worthy of putting out on its own thing again unless it's unless it's coast guard that's like the closest modern equivalent that we have to it extreme team they still use the logos for it every once in a while and back in the day extreme team did have a whole lot of their own stuff it was cool for that but how much could you really do nowadays with it that isn't already done or is going to be highly impressive? I mean, you'd still get, like, the old logo back. That's a potential thing you could do. But as far as vehicles go, I've seen these. I've seen these in City, and I can't see anything that would be more remarkable. Their level flight squad, maybe. But even that one, it's a big air show jet. I don't think they would be able to do something like Extreme Team Challenge, having an off road um, climbing adventure kind of thing, because they don't have red, raised base plates. And to create a mountain structure for very few functions, I don't think it's going to work there unless you add the vehicles into it. The strong point of this theme are the vehicles. Radical Racer, it does have a landscape built in, but it's a it's a prefab piece. It's not a it's not built out of other Lego pieces. A lot of these are vehicle based and definitely the kind of thing that City uh, encourages. But it's not gonna do a lot for it being um, you know a fan favorite a thing that would be a commemorative Lego set, from what I can tell. If they did make one, I would say maybe two two racing cars that you could put together. Maybe you could have a... Um... Actually, there is a modern equivalent. World Racers. That one counts. And I think that one is called extreme team again with the racers aspect of it it's not it doesn't stand out as much as it used to and i'm not saying it can't stand out again as a as a theme as a you know a couple sets here and there world racers released in 2010 with nine sets one of them was an accessory pack Two of them were poly bags. So if you break that down, you're talking about six sets, which is kind of weak sauce for a Lego theme, especially for something um, nowadays. If they did something like Extreme Team, I could see it like Desert of Destruction, a large vehicle that can contain a smaller race car inside with some pit crew stuff, with some repairs, with maybe some swappable motors, accessories, something like that. Maybe it wouldn't have projectiles because this theme did heavily lean on almost a, almost a speed racers aspect where it's like, oh, we have weapons so we can just fire at each other on the road. Okay. <laughs> All right, that works, I guess. But yeah, either it was Team Extreme, Extreme Team, something close to that that was um, a thing with World Racers. That's like your closest modern equivalent. And they're still, you know, they're substantial models compared to what they have in 
um, extreme team, but you'd have to carry that moniker a bit further than the World Racers version of it. So, I don't know. Again, I, I feel like it would be the kind of thing that you would need a little more to put together to, to make it stand out from what would be offered in City otherwise. Rock Raiders, now we're talking. So Rock Raiders, I, I actually I want to get to this, but I'll be right back. I will uh, take a quick siesta. So this one is potential. I'll start with that. I'll be right back. Hello there. So, where we left, left off, we were going to take a look at Rock Raiders. Rock Raiders is, I'm going to move the half now. I don't care how my hair looks. Rock Raiders, I love Rock Raiders. I loved Power Miners. And there are things that I loved about Rock Raiders that Power Miners did not have or did not have great. And the same rings true the opposite direction. It actually saddens me that after 2018, I didn't get any of the LEGO City um, mining sets. In fact, there were two waves of LEGO City miners that happened after Power Miners that I didn't get any sets from. What is wrong with me? Why? I don't know why I have a fascination with the mining things from Lego and why I didn't pick up the ones from City. Maybe because it felt so natural as opposed to feeling more industrial 
as opposed to feeling more a little more fantasy. Rock Raiders was heavily like sci-fi. Like the, you had hovercrafts. You had, well, a lot of the story revolved around supernatural things. This wasn't people drilling underground and finding stuff and setting up refineries and, and, organ, and drilling machines. They were on other planets. They were another go like a whole other galaxy away. And they were using mining vehicles, not only re harvesting for resources, but to get back home. Just to, again, one of those rare cases like uh, AquaZone, where it, the story builds more onto the sets than the sets supply and is fascinating for that. So I give Rock Raiders a lot of credit for the kind of story and the kind of bleak future of sci-fi that it presents that, again, is not often seen in LEGO. The bleak look also goes into the bleak color scheme because you have a lot of muddled colors in Rock Raiders. You have uh, dark gray, light gray, brown, black, yellow, and then you have teal. And you have some trans neon green, trans neon yellow, or orange, I mean, sorry. Um, teal, definitely one of the most shining things about Rock Raiders. You guys know that I love teal as a Lego color. This is why. This theme is why. And the fact that it's returned and it's abundant, I love it. I need more of it. I don't have enough, and I would love to build Rock Raiders stuff because of that return to teal. And teal is a cool color and a bunch of other things that doesn't have to just be for Rock Raiders. There are a lot of cool sets that use it wherever they can. I'm actually looking right now on the shelves. I see it sprinkled into a couple of other things, but yeah, pretty neat. The color scheme sort of works, kind of, because of the bleak, rustic, underground feel that it has. But I could definitely see that not working for people where it's too jumbled, they're too all over the place. It might not be attractive. I mean, it's not supposed to be as attractive given the circumstance, but it might not be a, a fun thing to look at and, and build all the time unless, again, it's something you grew up with. Power Miners was very standardized in colors, but it had a lot of good functions. You want to talk about time cruisers having an influence on anything afterwards? Power miners. Perfectly. Why? Because, again, a lot of functions, by moving vehicles around, you had a good number, I'd say almost half of the vehicles and models that were used in power miners involved rolling them around, pushing them around, moving things on the side while you're rolling them to make them move, to make them do functions. You had the crystals, you had the crystal sweeper. It has a large wheel mill thing in the middle to scoop up people, rock raiders, and crystals and dump them into a bucket. You had the thunder driller and the titanium command rig, both of which you roll them along, and a simple gear function will make a big, um, a big drill turn in opposite directions. It was, it was brilliant. It was great. It was incredible, and I still love playing with those to this day. You had the granite grinder. Where to come from? The name granite grinder was from Rock Raiders. It's a smaller version of a drill vehicle. It's not as much a mech as Rock Raiders was, but it did have a moving function. You rolled it along and it had this little drill poking in and out, but, and as well as carrying a bunch of cargo. You had, um, what's it called? I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Although I do have a thing called the internet here where I can look it up. That's the one, Claw Catcher. Claw Catcher, a big off-road looking vehicle 
with claws in front of it. As you roll it forward, claws sweep in, up, and dump into a tank behind it to get rid of um, lava monsters. Cool. Very, very cool. They did have a couple of bases. They had the underground mining base. They had the lava traz. Um, Boulder Blaster, it didn't actually do it. It is one of those that's like, you could do it while rolling, but you don't have to. But it launched dynamite on a catapult. Why not? It's brilliant. It's great. Magma Mech. It's a walking mech that has a huge um, kind of like grabber claw arm that can stretch out and grab something at the right, you know, length. The Cave Crusher, as well as I think the Rock Wrecker, had a bunch of spinning blades as you were rolling the vehicle along. With just a bunch of cheater wheels, but still a simpler um, drilling vehicle just to drive right through a wall. You had the Stone Chopper, built right into the first wheel. Then you have a whole bunch of saw blades rolling around as it's rolling around. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. It's so simple, yet so effective. The Claw Digger, another one where it's like you're gonna, you are gonna—you could use it independently or you could use it while moving the vehicle around. Big digger claws that can move up and down and you have a bucket that can sweep everything out of the way. I mention all these things, especially like Power Miners, incredible theme. If I, if I had to choose between Rock Raiders and Power Miners, I would choose Power Miners. It is a successor that does everything that Power that Rock Raiders set out for way better. It's got a lot more function. It's got a lot more flair to it. You can say that it's a little obnoxious in the color scheme at times. Um, the orange is actually a pretty good function. It yes, I'm calling a color a function because any of the elements in this in these sets that are in orange, or like most of the elements. Not all of them, but most of them that are orange in the first wave, blue in the second wave, are intended to show the function of the set, to show what this thing can do. When you move it around or when you press a button or move a, a knob or something, it's great for that. And then they had a bunch of other sets just for the fun of it. Crystal King. A big mech, technically. Uh, just a big buildable figure that you can throw rock monsters with. That you can pick them up and toss them around. You could actually almost put them inside of the, the creature's mouth. You've got a couple of poly bags. Let's see. I mentioned the mining stations to actually move materials back and forth, to move rock monsters back and forth. You know, it's defense mechanisms. Yeah. If Rock Raiders is that popular, I could definitely see people enjoying Rock Raiders. Is it niche? I don't know. But I definitely know it's big enough that there is a LEGO gaming forum called Rock Raiders United. RRU. It's been existing for many years. It's been very well masked with people finding different things, finding different codes, finding different mods, finding different ways of enjoying classic LEGO video games and some modern ones in new ways. There are people that are making a fan game of Rock Raiders. I think it's called Manic Miners, if I remember correctly, um, as, a, as a spiritual successor. Rock Raiders as a PC game was pretty rare for LEGO because it delved into the real-time strategy genre because it didn't really offer it outside of that, or at least not much. Not that I can remember. At least for, and, and probably for its time. I don't think there was anything modern RTS related. And then the PlayStation version was kind of boopy. Very, very low quality. Um... Rock Raiders was a really neat theme. It didn't have a whole lot to it like Power Miners did. Power Miners was a huge expansion of it. Rock Raiders was pretty, dare I say, 
down to earth on its selections. You had sets, you had a whole bunch of Kabaya polybag sets. I'm not going to count those in here. I'm going to just look at the retail ones. Like I said, some sci fi elements with some hovercraft models, large and small. You had a, right, a rapid rider. You had a boat in a mining theme because underground water, you know? You can have groundwater. You can have little streams and caverns that you know to go through, and that's it. Well, it's just this little tiny boat. You had a large mech that has legs that, that shift in place and have a big drill on top of it, the granite grinder. You had the loader dozer, your basic um, bulldozer and dump truck kind of vehicle. Maybe not. That's the other thing. These also didn't have the best construction. Especially coming to nowadays, the loader dozer is very, very gappy. And maybe that's where you can see the colors clash a lot. You have the, cor you have the chrome crusher. It's another almost dump truck kind of vehicle with a laser on top of it. With a drill in the front. With a satellite or radar, if you may, uh, on the other end. It's just a big, heavy hauling vehicle. You had the Tunnel Transport, a great heavy hauling vehicle. This is one of my favorite sets from the Lock Raiders team out of all of them. I almost have all of them. I love this one growing up, and I love this one rebuilding it as an adult. It's a giant aircraft. Again, in a, in a theme that takes place underground and in caverns, you have an aircraft, huge aircraft, that can carry around materials or vehicles. It gives you the option of a of a, not trough, but uh, a bucket. It's magnetic. Um, and then you have the option of a driller, also magnetic. Yeah, it might not be easy to do that sort of thing now, and this was really the only set that offered magnets of the entire theme. Yeah, you probably won't do much with the lasers either, unless you count, like, the light bricks. But... The option, there's there's kind of an option there. Rock Raiders HQ. It's got a couple of different avenues to drive around vehicles. It's got a crane. It's got a laser. It's got a hovercraft. It's got a whole bunch of space to walk people around if you wanted them to. It's got a, um, another dumping mechanism. It's pretty neat. Probably still a bit gappy, but, but also kind of neat. So... I would say if it was big enough, if it did actually have the popularity to become a Lego set, what a reimagining, once again, I would say it would have the aesthetic of Rock Raiders with the function and cleanup of, of, of design with power miners. So literally take a power miner set and spray it all in teal, yellow, dark gray, light gray, black. And um, there you have it. I would love to see some vehicle like that. I don't know exactly uh, which one it would adapt from. I would say it would probably have to be a drilling vehicle just to get the mining aspect across. Something that's like... I don't know. I guess if you really... If you really tried, you can make like the granite grinder or something equivalent to the granite grinder with the gear function built in. So as you move the legs, then it would actually move the drill itself. Um, let me look into the mining sets from City out of curiosity. I know they're going to be a little bit on the... The, the, the other thing I kind of been worried about those is like some of them almost look construction-y. I didn't go into them that much. I think I have only the mining team set in 2018. I couldn't even tell you where. Uh, the mining power splitter. That almost looks like a power miners kind of thing. I don't know if that's... It, it looks like a giant jackhammer on wheels. But that's kind of cool. You've got the mining heavy driller. So... Very low tunneling kind of vehicle. I've seen that a couple of times before. Not necessarily in Lego form. It's um, but but still kind of works. It's the kind of thing that again, 
you drive it along the and the the drill will spin and it'll break apart things. The mining expert site. This one has a rail to it. A Rock Raiders HQ with a mine cart would be great. Take the dwarves mine. Perfect example. You have a whole bunch of different ways in that set to move materials around, whether it's up or down, or you have them down a slide, you have the cart in the middle of it. Yeah, that works. The giant mining vehicle I'm not familiar with, but I, I'm i sure it's it's real. I'm sure it's based on a real thing. There's a loader and tipper set from 2012. So these are only six years apart between mining themes for the city. Loader and tipper, it's very construction looking. And yet, I kind of like the value in what was available there. Mining truck. It's a giant dump truck. It literally looks like a Tonka dump truck. Um, next. Excavator transporter. Again. Again, it just looks like a giant um, construction vehicle with a trailer. And then you have the mine, which again has that low bearing um, tunneling drilling thing. It's got a train to it. It's got it's got a lot of things going for it. It's got a crane on top. It's got uh, like a big trolley. You, you can bring a truck around. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think even with these, what else they would what they would do. How do you take all those different mining elements and pull them together in a newer Rock Raiders themed set? I feel like if you had something like that, it should be a large drilling vehicle like the Titanium Command Rig. Spinning drill. So as it moves, spinning drill. It's got to have a sci-fi element to it. So you got to have some kind of hover craft that can launch off of it. Look at the Rock Raiders video game and you'll find a lot of options for different vehicles that were never made as Lego sets. And you could probably pick and choose from there what kind of vehicles could work with it or the, you know, the size and shape of the vehicles. You could probably even have a small dump truck that drops off of it. That You could have a vehicle that or you could have a crane on it that is going around scooping things up. So yeah, we are we are almost literally looking at the titanium command rig in teal. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing either. Actually, here's what I'm thinking. Titanium command rig is a transforming feature, or has a transforming feature, where you can drive it through, have a big drill in the front, or you can tilt the entire thing upward, make a tower, and then it's drilling down. I would like the idea to create something like the Titanium Command Rig. It has a bucket underneath the drill itself, so that it'll catch whatever is in there and feed it back into a bucket. So it's like the titanium command rig meets the crystal sweeper. Then you have a large crane on the back of it that can either be used for exterior drilling on the sides or picking up objects from the ground and transporting them into the base, into the, the middle of it, I would say. It's like the base. Then on some other side of it, you have a vehicle that can eject, so they can be like a hovercraft. And that would actually be a really cool set. You could put potentially the entire Rock Raiders team on there, including the Chief. All of those parts still exist. They still make those helmets, from what I remember, except for Jet. I think Jet is the only one where the helmets no longer are made. Yeah, that's what it looks like. 
Let me check again. Let me check the Rock Raiders set. They, as far as I remember, they still make Doc's headpiece, his hat. They still make the bandana. Um, Sparks and Axel have the same helmet, which I think is still made. I think I've seen that recently. Jed is the only one I can think of that would probably need a brand new piece, but I don't think it would be hard to replace. I think if you got the right ones, you'd be all right. Uh, let me see. I'm just looking up the helmet for Sparks and Axel. So I do see it in 2018 in Lego Batman movie. There's a villain that had it. That was the last known use of it. I mean, you could probably change the other ones if you needed to, but I wouldn't change it by too much. There is, uh, there's probably some other helmets that could work like that. If you needed to include a laser, you probably could have one as either a spring launcher or a light. And I feel like they'll probably go within in the realm of a spring launcher because then you could have multiple bolts you could shoot. So Rock Raiders, I can see a lot of potential. I think there's a good following still, a good fan base, but I can't be too sure about it. And I did not vote for them, but they were in the running for me. They, they would have been number four probably if uh, Aqua Zone was not there. Lego Studios, it's charming. It's cool. It's got a neat, unique presence. But it's the kind of thing that I don't know if LEGO would ever make again as a full-fledged theme. LEGO Studios is like the thing people mostly dislike from a LEGO set nowadays. If they have a LEGO set that is missing a side to it, that it's a facade, they would not like this theme. Because Lego Studios is, is about scaffolding. It's about stage props. It's about stage lighting. It's about making only half of what the environment you're supposed to be playing in. What the movie is actually about. Because the play comes from simulating making a movie. I don't know why when I was a kid, or not even a kid, mid-teens to adult, uh, <laughs> when the Lego City Jungle line released... I thought for some reason that could make for a Lego Studios theme or a potential Studios theme. Problem is, really, it wasn't going to happen. Let me look back in here. Studios itself was from 2000, 2000 plain year 2000. To 2002. And it did introduce some licensed themes and some concepts that we enjoy nowadays. It had Spider Man. It was the first time they used Spider Man. It has Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3 specifically, which we now have Jurassic World and plenty of it. It had the Monster series. 
which now we got to enjoy as Monster Fighters and Hidden Side. Notice in all of those examples that they became something bigger than studios, that they were more developed than studios. And that's why I find studios to be in this awkward balance of when it came out that it would not be able to return to. Or you would have to put it into something where there's another option already available. Take, for example, some of these other sets. Explosion Studio. It's an exploding bank. Great, thrilling thing. Even if you don't have, and, and I, I do want to say the LEGO Studios, one of the key components of it is that you're making a stop motion animation. It is an entire LEGO theme based around that. You buy the, Stu the Steven Spielberg Movie Maker set as a good setup. It gives you a camera and software to edit and create Lego films. It gives you a whole bunch of different things you can move around, characters to use, vehicles, dinosaurs, buildings. You got it. Can you play with it as a Lego set on its own? Probably. But not by too far because of the animation aspect to it. All the other LEGO Studio sets do stand on their own to some degree. I should know because I did not have the Movie Maker set as a kid. I did get a lot of the other studio sets, including, as I said, Explosion Studio. Oh, I get to build a bank, and then I can explode the bank by pressing this button on the side of it. I have to set up the whole thing and then, you know, explode it again, but it's still fun. But it doesn't look entirely like a bank because it's for a studio. It's for a movie prop. So they do cut a few corners. There's not as in depth of a bank in there. And it does have that as a main purpose to explode it. Having something like that or a race card with a ramp or a helicopter chasing a bad guy. Uh, I'm looking at some of the other things in here. You have uh, a giant dinosaur head. You have Temple of Gloom, as I mentioned earlier, about the adventurer's theme. Um, you have a whole bunch of these sets available, and I think they would only work again if there was a city equivalent not too long before or after it. And that's the trouble that LEGO has. They are going to really replicate the same model in the same year without a whole lot of difference. I can't remember the last time that they did for City and another theme. Maybe like City and Superheroes sometimes. Maybe City and Friends. But usually they would work around those in some way. Because... That keeps the idea, that keeps the designer fresh. That way, I want to build this model. Okay, we haven't built one of these in a while, or we haven't built it the same exact way, so we can put it out for another product another year. Putting them out at the same time is going to cause a lot of confusion for people, where they're probably not going to buy the half-baked one from studios, unless it's the only one. Any of the times after LEGO Studios became was a thing. After 2002, if LEGO pursued that route again, it was only in the LEGO Movie and LEGO Movie Maker sets. LEGO Movie 1 did not have a Movie Maker set that I remember. They had a whole bunch of sets that are based on the LEGO Movie, and they were full-fledged sets. I mean... A couple of them were cheating, taking corners from what the movie adaptation was, but they were still a full thing you could play with. It wasn't a facade for the most part. So it maybe a little bit of War Business's Eagle Lair, but it had a much it had a whole bunch to it that could still be played around with. You didn't really need to turn it around that much, unless you had the infinity drop. For, uh, for Emmett. That was it. That was about it. But then uh, you take a look, and, and maybe the Crackle Door. 
But again, you're going to open it on one side anyways. You have the Lego Batman movie, the Lego Ninjago movie, and the Lego Movie 2 following up. All three of those had a Lego Movie Maker set. And I think one of them had a poly bag. Maybe two of them. In fact, I actually have right next to me most of, it's just almost incomplete, or almost complete, Lego Batman stand for a camera. This is the kind of thing that they added in, you know, for the movie maker sets. So that way you can set up your smartphone, download a free app, set up figures, props, maybe a small build or two, scenery, but not a lot of scenery, and make a scene. You'd actually be able to animate a scene. It was already expensive technology at the time of LEGO Studios to make the Steven Spielberg Movie Maker set, from what I've understood. Nowadays, with smartphones, it's a lot simpler to approach that technology once again. But this time, you don't have to include a, a giant camera with your set. You could just let people use their phones and take the pictures that they need to on a free app. The LEGO Movie Maker app originally started, I believe, with DC Super Heroes, then made its way into LEGO Movie 1, if I remember correctly, and then proceeding with the other LEGO movies and the Movie Makers with them. So, by proxy, that's the only way that Studios has been relevant again is because of the LEGO movies in theaters and having a camera stand movie maker app. There are some other Lego sets, especially from Friends. There was a cafe diner set, some kind of like drive up diner set. There's one from this year that's a Lego um, Friends movie theater that you can stick your phone into and be able to watch a, a video on it. So that way, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, you can play around with that. You can't actually make a movie through it. It's just made to contain it so you could have your figures watching the videos, you know, watching the films. Okay. That's not bad. Nice integration of the... Oh, it's really fun. Here for the day. But LEGO Studios making a new set. Hey, Adikin, how's it going? Gotta be honest, it looks weird having Bionicle beside the rest of the feeds. That is true. <laughs> and that's coming soon. It is weird trying to recreate LEGO Studios in some way, in some kind of fashion, without making it feel underwhelming. You'd really have to get someone invested with the steel framework that a studio prop thing is going to set up. And LEGO sets nowadays are so... I mean, there are still facades. That is still a thing. And that's probably the best way you could interpret that. And you can still add in play features all over the place. Just like any other LEGO set. That's the problem. Sanctum Sanctorum did not need to have a studio's attachment to it to sell as a set. And to tell you, oh, that's why we have all these little buttons and knobs and things to move around to break the windows, to launch the pizzas, to fling someone off the roof, whatever the case may be. It's a studio. It's a it's a Marvel set. It's with superheroes. They can just do that. It's already understood that a lot of the play features in those sets are going to be mechanically driven by us, the people building them. So putting it in this fourth walling mode that studios is, you know, oh, these are mechanically driven. Oh, these dinosaurs are animatronics. It's probably not going to work again. It had a sweet spot. I'm glad it existed. I had a lot of fun with it. But I don't see that one sticking strongly. I think people would be most interested in it because of the essence of it the ability to create Lego movies. But as long as you have the free Movie Maker app, even if you don't have... <clears throat> even if you don't have the Movie Maker sets from Studios, 
Lego Movie 2, Lego Mo Batman Movie, or Lego Ninjago Movie. If you don't have any of those, you can still use your own pieces, put together a stand. You could use your own pieces, put together a scene. You could use your own pieces to build the minifigs, accessories, special effects even. You can make things fall over if you need them to. You can make things turn around if you need them to. Because they're just an extension of a Lego set's function. Like Rick's, how's it going? I, it's not that I don't love studios, but it is a product of its time that is hard to continue. If there was support for it, if I had to pull together a studio set, I would say it needs to have a balance between that immersive world it's trying to film and the camera crew behind the scenes. There are some of the studio sets that stand out better than others, as if it wasn't from that perspective. I'm looking right now at the LEGO Studio sets. Uh, 1374 Green Goblin. If you... Taking the set as it is, that works. That easily works with any superhero set, modern, or, or from that time. Even the even the little like flames, yeah, probably could be seen as a studio's, you know, prop thing. But you could put them just about anywhere and still work as part of the environment, as still part of the the scene. Obviously, the box art and instruction art are going to show and cut. It has a big, you know flat backdrop. It has, again, those stage cur girders. Spider-Man Action Studio. It kind of works. It does look like a complete building, but if you turn it around, it's, a, it's far from complete. You have the front door made out of cardboard. Not cardboard. Um, almost card stock. Like, almost an like an index card, but a little bit thicker, perhaps. For the door, the siding, and it's also on the back of it used to build a larger scene along with the Green Goblin set. So it's a it's an alternate build kind of thing, combo build, um, separately packaged. I've held one. And I'm like, well, I mean, I didn't get it for myself. I got it for BFAP. On the front, it doesn't look too bad, but it is a facade at the end of the day. Not a lot of functions to it other than doll play, other than the figure play. You still have a whole bunch of things in here that kind of work with the studio's aspect, but not for that whole building. A uh, whole bunch of the... What do you call it? A whole bunch of the monster sets, I'd say, were a bit better in trying to be that balance between immersed inside of the film itself and stage prop because you have things that can turn around things that can fall over things that raise and lower that that kind of hide that a bit better the scary laboratory almost straight up works with monster fighters or hidden side like very few pieces in that are actually part of the staging are actually part of the propping you have a small vanity that can be easily removed from the uh, laboratory structure. You have a, it's like a, it's like a, what do you call it? Film camera on wheels. You take that away from it as well, you got yourself a monster fighter set, basically. Everything else in there has play functions that would integrate with the structure. You don't have to say, oh, it's because it's part of the stage. It could be part of the laboratory, too. And I know because they built that one last year. Uh, yeah. Here we go. So, Spider-Man Action Pack. It had the Spider-Man Action Studio with the Green Goblin, and it had a bonus pack of pieces. And all that created a really thin structure that replicates one of the scenes from the film that the other sets 
only somewhat did. There's a bunch of other ones that, again, are are made so much so to tailor to the, uh, the movie making experience. I don't know how it would work modern day. Temple of Gloom is another good one that could work on its own. Again, one that I built last year. Um, I grew up with the cameraman set, but there's so little substance to it. There's nothing to actually film. It's just, here's part of the stage. Here's part of our background. It's an add-on for sure if you wanted it, but... I feel bad if you were the if this was the only set that you owned in studios. Raptor Rumble looks a bit barren. It's very easy to break into this facility because you have walls that spin around and you have a completely open doorway. And yeah. I own that set. Spinosaurus Attack was better. I own both of those sets, and I have never seen Jurassic Park 3. I was like, ooh, dinosaurs, as a kid. Because who doesn't say, ooh, dinosaurs? Spinosaurus Attack was better because it looked like a full tree, and it still had a girder in the back of it. It still looked like a complete plane, but you could still break it apart. You still had a dinosaur, at least for its time. And you had a stuntman. Sure, it doesn't look accurate to the film, but neither did Johnny Thunder or Pippin Reed. And you had this little platform next to it to raise and lower the camera. That's fine. That works. You take away the dinosaur element or you replace it with something else. It doesn't necessarily scream Jurassic Park. It's it's good. we all know they need to remake the Lego Nesquik Rabbit. Oh, that'd be a good idea. I had a whole lot of promo poly bags from this theme. I can't think of another theme that had so many promo poly bags. And I don't even know why so many. A whole bunch of these were just like parts they didn't use in any other sets. Or if they did, they didn't really give you much. It's like you could have put these with any other things. Love this tree. Look up 4073. Tree 1. That was a Lego set. That was a poly bag. There's even other trees in here. Tree 2 or Tree 3. That looks substantially better. Oh, here's another charming one. 4079 Mini Rex. Four pieces. You'll never know how they built that rock. One by two. It would have to be an all-out kind of set. Something that can hold the camera, but still have a, a, look, a good-looking structure and function and be able to get the movie studio perspective, you know? And even and even so, they, I don't know, I don't even know if they use reels like that anymore when making films. So maybe they'd have to make something different as far as the kind of camera. I could be wrong, but I don't know. Any Lego set could be turned into a studio set, so it doesn't really have much original character. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Bionicle Forever. Because it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take a lot to add them in. Um, I'm going to hop over on Brick Set to Jungle, sub-theme of City, where I thought, oh, this could be a Lego studio theme. Like, I said, like we said before, we just said it, any theme could be a LEGO Studios theme. 
As I look at this one up close, once again, haven't looked at it in a little while, but still have a bunch of the sets of it. Uh, I mentioned earlier about this being a good successor to Adventurers, but not going as far as I hoped. It's got a lot of small shrines and environments to interact with. That part I like. It still has vehicles, that's fine. But it balances between them, you know. And it's pretty okay. Jungle Mobile Lab. Yeah, you got a beefy vehicle, but you still got this staircase with broken elements and a crocodile behind a waterfall that you can peek out. And a Venus flytrap. Jungle Exploration Site. You've got a whole bunch of vehicles with a you know, structurally unsound rubble and broken plane. And, uh, yeah. Jungle Airdrop Helicopter. Another one where there's not a... This one actually kind of leans in the opposite direction. It doesn't have a lot to offer for exploration compared to the vehicles. You've got, like, this huge surplus drop. You have uh, a big Jeep... ATV kind of looking thing. You've got a ferry. You've got a dock. And then you've got the actual, again, Venus flytrap and um, and ruins. So I don't know. And I have um, more than half of these sets, almost entirely half of them, actually. Um, I do like that each one of these sets has something to explore. That it's not just the jewel. Even the smallest sets, Jungle Explorer Kit, you still have a, a shrine with the jewel surrounding it. Jungle Buggy could have just been the gem, but it has a little thing to uncover. The, city, the Jungle Starter Set, you open up part of the tree to get to the goods. These are the kinds of things that we need from exploratory themes from Lego. Adventurers, miners, underwater, all that kind of stuff and more has to have more than just the vehicle associated with it. You use the vehicle to travel to it and maybe break it open or traverse it, but it's still got to have something bigger, something uh, more to do with it. Now we come to Bionicle. Now, I did vote for Bionicle, but here's my condition. I voted Bionicle because I want to see one more set. I don't know if 2021 is going to offer us a year of Bionicle officially from LEGO, especially when Ninjago is celebrating its 10-year anniversary. It's not that they can't celebrate two anniversaries in the same year they have done that before. Two from two different themes is a bit of a stretch, especially considering 20 years of a theme that hasn't fully lived 20 years. Ninjago has fully lived 20 years. Or Ninjago has fully lived 10 years. Star Wars has fully lived 20 years. Lego minifigures have lived fully 40 years. Um, Technic has lived at least fully 40 years. Lego Bionicle technically did not have that many years. If they did a 10-year anniversary, that would be fine. But they're way past due for having a 10-year anniversary. I think it would still be great to acknowledge them, but I can totally see the principle that they're not still going. It's already discontinued. It's been canceled twice. And even if you add up all of those years, it's still not going to be 20. You still have a whole bunch of years in between where it wasn't active and only it gets some references here and there. However, if LEGO plays homage to Bionicle to acknowledge that it was a theme that has deeply impacted tons of LEGO fans, ones that didn't even know of LEGO when playing with Bionicle. They just played with it as kids and got into LEGO because of it. 
or some Lego fans that extended into Bionicle like myself. You have people that may have not been playing with Lego at all and played with Bionicle and may have not played with Lego after. You have ones that may have just played with other things like Gundams and Transformers and Zoids and other robot-based things, and Bionicle was a part of that group. Because why not? They're cool robots. They're all cool robots. I, I played with each of those to some extent in my life. Maybe not Gundam. I think it's the only one I'm not sure about. But if you look at the other ones, somebody has played with and understands Bionicle before and possibly during uh, Ninjago being the thing. I have said this before, and I will continue saying it, Ninjago is this generation's Bionicle, and there's nothing wrong with that. You compare a lot of elements between those two as to why Ninjago is still sticking around. Why did Bionicle stick around? Same concepts, same storylines, presence, characters, abilities, fantasy, lore. Yes, it's there. The DNA is there. And people have even said... We wouldn't have Ninjago, or we wouldn't have as many people interested in Ninjago as we did Bionicle. I don't know for sure about that, because I do think there would have still been an audience for Ninjago without Bionicle. But that being said, I have still been able to introduce Bionicle to kids five years old, six years old, as early as like a year ago. It's one of my favorite stories. I love, love, love this story. In 2019, roughly October 2019, I think I've tweeted about it. I think I've shared it a number of times on social media. In October or so of 2019, I was running a STEM class with five to six-year-olds, just a handful of them, not too many, not, not a full-size class or anything, but it was manageable. As a treat for good behavior, I wanted to bring in some of my own Lego stuff. And this was before COVID, so it was all cleaned. I mean, it was still going to be cleaned either way, but I mean, there wasn't as much risk of outside materials, I should say. But I still kept it at a, at a, at a small level as a reward, as something special, extra for the class to enjoy. They were on good behavior. And I decided I'm going to bring in some Bionicle, introduce something new to them. If they don't like it, it doesn't have to come back. We could still play with the other Lego that we already have at the center. We could probably bring in some other Lego, you know, if they're on good behavior and if it interests them. But at least wanted to give them the experience and see what would happen. I didn't have to explain the whole story. I didn't have to explain all the books, media, and influence that Bionicle had in the early 2000s. They knew the toys just by looking and playing with them. They enjoyed the Borak. They enjoyed the Tohamada. And they went to town with it. Just for the very end of our class. And then they asked me to bring them back. That's the even better part. That they played with them. They played with them with each other. They thought they were cool. I've shown them some of the functions on them. So they could roll them around. They could... Press the heads forward. They can move arms and legs and everything. And I told them they were like a... And I told them, when I was your age, this is what I grew up with, with Lego. Among other Lego pieces, these were popular. These were brand new when I was your age. The fact that they wanted them to come back was great. And I even extended it to Throwbots, maybe a little bit of Robo Riders, other Bionicle figures. Maybe not too many of them, maybe not the gargantuan ones, but still tried to bring a few more. As long as, again, they're on good behavior. And I saw that there was an interest there. I was happy to bring them back. And I was happy to see that they really genuinely were interested in them. Five to six-year-olds still willing to play with them. That is not to say that Bionicle is timeless. But it is to say it's not completely dead. It is something that can still be of interest 
and can still be inter uh, still be impact on kids. It is something that is still alive and well by community standards. And I think that is something to credit, is something to admire. People are still building with Bionicle parts. There are still Bionicle parts being used in Lego sets. I'm looking across the room right now at a Monkey Kid set that uses Borok eyes in orange. Lego may have been able to make that without Bionicle, but it was Bionicle that first brought it on. And there are probably a dozen other pieces that are available or would not have been made possible without Bionicle. Sure, the action figure phase of Lego is wobbly and probably not, you know, something to expect in the near future. So what would I and Mother see as a Lego set if Bionicle was chosen? Simple. Take a helmet, the same kind of helmet setup, display value, the, the kind of design and intrigue and the, 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 you know, the dedication to it that you have with the Star Wars helmets and put it on the hat. Put it on the red Tahu mask of shielding. And if you had enough parts extra, build six of them. That would be incredible. I would love to see that as a mock. I'm sure people have been submitting those as Lego Ideas projects and submitting other system mocks. Even if Lego, I mean, I, I've seen people go the way of Mixel Joints to try to create smaller versions of the Toamata. It's really cool. It's really good. And I don't mind it. I am totally for Bionicle having one more set in system form as a commemorative piece. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. All that Bionicle fans like myself are hoping for at this point is acknowledgement that the theme is still important to Lego or still, or, or, or was a big impact for Lego in how they are now. Everybody knows the financial ruin story. Bionicle was one of the themes that helped save Lego, along with Lego Star Wars. It's sometimes credited as the theme, but as far as I can tell, it's probably, you know, sharing a spotlight. It is one of the longest running themes in Lego history, outside of Evergreen's, like, town. Lego Ninjago is catching up. And it would not surprise me if Ninjago passed it. Friends, I think, is even catching up. And Friends isn't even story-driven. I mean, there are little stories every season or so, every year or so, but not as heavily story-driven as Monkey Kid, Nexo Knights, Legends of Chima, Bionicle, Ninjago, and plenty others. Bionicle was a cultural phenomenon. It was big for Lego at that time, for many years. Early, like the first five years in, it was all over the place. It was on all different merchandise. It was in contests. It was all over the place. It meant something big. And all that all the Bionicle fans are asking for is that Lego didn't push it into the dust in 2016 and completely forget about it. Acknowledgement of that theme, the way that they have acknowledgement about the wooden duck, a way that the, the same way that they would acknowledge about the yo-yo, the same way that they would acknowledge about Several other things, you know, Technic, Star Wars, Ninjago, the uh, first Lego articulated Lego minifigure, a police officer, um, classic space, 
Pirates. A bunch of the ones from this list. That's what it's about. That's the kind of thing that Bionicle fans are looking forward to, that they've been petitioning for since LEGO Ideas, since Sakota's project, and possibly other ones before and after it. It is not to ask for the theme to return. That is a pipe dream. Let's be real here. That is not going to happen. LEGO is not going to make a commemorative CCBS return of Bionicle. They're not going to bring the theme back. We've already seen how it went in 2015 and 2016. I'm surprised that Journey to One is still on Netflix. And that's where they're leaving it. If Star Wars couldn't carry the buildable figures without a decrease, Bionicle is not going to do it. And there can be any number of reasons why, any number of causes, whether or not internally or externally, from the fans, from the designers, whatever the case may be. Bionicle has had its mark on LEGO's history. And even if it's no longer a thing, it should still be counted with the greats. The closest that we've ever seen of official acknowledgement would be the fire truck I'm standing next to with the hidden side sets, putting you know a sticker on there and a bunch of stickers. Lego City, like a Ninjago movie. You get little things here and there. In fact, the uh, school bus also from hidden side, Bionicle reference as well. It puts it along with other themes that were a part of LEGO history, but Bionicle should be eligible for a veteran card. <laughs> or a veteran discount, if you may. Just that's that's all I would like to see is one more system based set. I think a lot of people would be pitching in for that or something for similar. And there we go. So that way we know it went out with a bang, not a whimper. Of all the years of Bionicle, I think it was about 12 years. 2001 to 2010, 10 years. 2015 to 2016, two years, 12 years. I could be wrong on my math. Maybe it's a little bit more or less than that. All right, let's move on. I definitely spoke up a lot, and I I want to get moving. <laughs> Arctic. Nope. Not saying there aren't fans of Arctic, but I will say it's not the kind of thing people would be clamoring for a commemorative set for a 90th anniversary of the Lego Group set. Arctic is something that is good to have around. It is an integral part of city since the early 2000s. But in general, it does very little. I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing that it's going to come back around anyways. I've said this before on a couple of other themes, and I will say it again. Arctic if it will not be, you know, missed for a long period of time. Kind of like Pirates. They will put out more of them over time. That's not a problem to them. A lot of them kind of, for better or for worse, work together for the color scheme and some of the design elements. Even if they're a couple of years apart, you can still pair these sets together and make something cool. No pun intended.
Arctic had set in 2014, then 2018, you know, literally four years apart. They were both summer wave items. I don't think I finished building these actually. I've built most of the 2018 ones. I have the entire 2018 wave. I think I'm only, um, I think I only have two of them left to build. Honestly, Arctic is probably the closest thing we have to modern um, ice planet. Even though it's not as sci-fi, it still has a lot of like adapting to the weather. Now, the Arctic that they show on here is from 2000. So yeah, there was a big gap between Arctic themes for a while. You had the Technic Arctic in, 90, in 1986. So bigger scale, a couple of bigger sets. 14 years later, they put Arctic in town, as they show it on here, in the year 2000. And these are bad. These are all right. These are along the same standard as other town sets in 2000. They're about. Nothing wrong with these from that time period. A little bare bones compared to today. Polar bears still got a lot of things you can play around with. Arctic exploration, okay, not bad. The mobile outpost, another great one from it. Gives you a lot to play around with between basically three vehicles. 14 years after that, they integrate it into city, and then four years later was our last wave of them in 2018. So it's not often, but it's not like they've never made it again. You still get a whole bunch of them just rotated out from uh, other from other summer waves from city. I mean, the fact that they made an icebreaker boat is kind of admirable because the early Arctic from 2000 had one in LEGO Racers 2. Like, again, it's another case of a video game expanding upon what the toys cannot. But now we have it in toy form. If they did make a set based off of it, I would imagine it would be some kind of drilling or hauling vehicle, possibly both. Maybe with an outpost at best, but not entirely required. It would have some kind of structure to break apart, because the 2018 uh, sets had a couple of structures to break up or hide away in, which is something I do like, as I mentioned before. I do like that in exploratory themes. And probably something with a snowmobile or ski function or look. So, <sighs> so that's all right. I don't think it needs to be a polar base itself. And speaking of polar and bases, we're finally look at Alpha Team. Jeez Louise, I've been going for three hours. I have no idea. Alpha Team has a lot of sets and was great for its time being the first 
of spy-oriented LEGO themes. And the fact that there are multiple of them in which to say there's a category of spy LEGO themes is pretty awesome. It's pretty remarkable on its own. The last time we saw anything directly about Alpha Team was in the Haunted House from last year. And then sometime before that, a collectible minifigure had a spy um, look to him that was reminiscent of Alpha Team. When Alpha Team started, it was in 2001. It did have a set in 2000. It did also have sets in 2002. And that got into a whole different sub-series of it. Literally subs. And then you had 2004, and that was it. It basically had three waves of sets, almost four waves of sets. Oh, yeah, 2005. Inside of three years. Almost four years. Alpha Team started, to put in perspective, Alpha Team started at almost the same time as Bionicle did in the United States. That's something. That's something incredible. And when Alpha Team started, it didn't even have that sense. It had six different sets. They can collect different figures in each of them. They have pairs of agents. They are using to fight against Ogle. The sets interacted with each other. You could put some of these sets together in order to destroy the base. You had the Alpha Team Bomb Squad literally built so that you can have the Ogle Command Center, the Ogle Control Center, tear it down. And the Ogle Control Center on its own is a cool operative um, set. You can move things around from one side to the other very nicely. Each of them had comics. There was a Game Boy game. There was a PC game. It fleshed out the story of the sets a little bit more. And it's funny that the first year had an Alpha Team ATV and sub, because the following year would use more subs as you go underwater. With what I gotta say is the most... It's like this... Box art shouldn't work, and yet it does. It's very dark and bland, and yet iconic. It, it stands out on its own. The Alpha Team Mission Deep Sea box art is something in interesting. There was a whole bunch of sets in this wave. No pun intended. Some of them even store exclusives. Some of them even polybags. It was probably the most expansive wave of Alpha Team that they ever had. You had a lot of retail items, more than you had the previous year. You had retailer exclusives in the form of the Old Gold Mutant Ray and the Aqua Team Aquatic Mech. I would love to build those again. Like my words, I will try that. And then you had almost the same of variety, a little, a little bit less, in the following year and a half. 2004, and then follow it in 2005 with two sets. So, um... 2004 and 5, in that wave, Mission Deep Freeze, you had eight sets. All retailer sets, no polys, no promos, no small boxes, like the previous year. Just straight up retail. A lot more agents developed, a lot more vehicles developed, a lot more, you know, battling bad guys. You had the Tundra Tracker that had a um, a drilling function. Again, this is kind of like the other teams I was talking about. 
however many times in this video, having a drill and having a thing to drill it through and function to drill it through. Like it actually breaks apart. A lot of these vehicles also have transforming functions, which was a really, really neat thing. Some of them might be as simple as fold it up or fold it down. Uh, Blizzard Blaster and Chill Speeder being prime examples of that. But then you had things like the Ice Blade. You pop off something on top, you spin the, the cab of it around, you link them in place, boom, it's a helicopter. And, and then you could switch it back to being a snowmobile. Tundra Tractor is kind of basic. You just tilt the vehicle upward to reveal the drill. Blue Eagle versus Snowcrawler, a little basic, but still different. That you fold the wings in, move down the turbines, and then drop down the, the cockpit. And now it's a... A, a lower, you know, closer to the ground snowmobile. I don't know if mobile command center really counts because it's just opening up the sides of the vehicle. Like, how else are you supposed to get inside of it? It's a play vehicle. Ogles Mountain Fortress, I don't think counts as much because it's literally just tilting the vehicle upward in order to fire out its butt. I know what I said. The only set that didn't have a transforming function, well, actually it did, but for the villains, surprisingly, was a scorpion orb launcher. Again, a little on the basic side, but at least had a different presence to it, where you just take the legs, you fold them up, and then you fold up the tail so the thing is standing upright, like a snake. Can't really use the function of the tail as much for flinging orbs around, and the Alpha Team vehicle on the set is just a basic paraglider. But there you have it. And in a way, the Snowcrawler also has that for a villain feature, where if you, you basically get this thing to, to pop it apart. If the, the top of it is removed by the Blue Eagle, by the little claw in the back, grabbing it, pull it up, and the thing falls right out. Is it an escape video vehicle? I don't know. Is it malfunctioning now? I don't know. But yeah, a bunch of these sets actually were pretty nice. So here's when I say it would be great if there were more of these. If there was another, if there was another Alpha Team set. I'd be happy with it. But it's not the kind of thing I voted for. The three that I voted for were Aqua, Aqua Zone, Adventurers, and Bionicle. Alpha Team would have been a close one. Especially considering the kind of variety that these vehicles had. You did have a lot of spy vehicles. You did have a, you know, some interesting color schemes. But you also had vehicles that could actually play together. You had vehicles that didn't feel too repetitive. Maybe a little bit Mission Deep Sea between like one or two of them. Alpha Team Command Sub, Alpha Team Navigator, and Rove. Maybe a little bit. You had the Alpha Team Robot Diver. You could just add to the Command Sub. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I can't say they were all ballpark, ballpark winners, but I could definitely see an Alpha Team set that uses an Ogle vehicle and an Alpha Team vehicle. If you can't do a base, then you're going to do two clashing vehicles. Probably one that's on ground, one that's on air. Probably Ogle in the air and Alpha Team on the ground. <laughs> Including minifigures, putting the five of the basic alpha team might be a lot in there. Unless you give a bigger vehicle or multiple vehicles that they could use. I'm sorry, that's I didn't write the rules. 
they all kind of did. You can't just have them as passengers, you know? I do think Mission Deep Sea was probably the strongest wave out of Alpha Team. It had the most variety, and it had a good premise to the Ogle vehicles being the way that they were. I do like the color scheme of the original one, black, yellow, transparent neon green, and blue, transparent blue. I do like that consistency. I would actually like to pair all of those vehicles together. I do have all of them in the first wave. I would like to put them all together side by side and see how it looks. <laughs> Alpha Team Mission Deep Freeze. Yeah, there's still cool stuff about them. I don't think it's necessary to make something based off of those, unless you could really make a nice transforming function. That's basically uh, my thumbs up, my recommendation. And then we're at the end of the list. Technically, there is a bottom of the end of the list where you could submit about another LEGO sub theme. Honestly, I can't imagine what else there is to do. I do want to take one more note for Alpha Team before leaving. Alpha Team last left off in 2005. Agents. Picked up in 2000, what, seven, eight, eight, three years before they revisited that concept. And they did a great job with it. I enjoyed Agents and Agents 2.0 the following year, 2009, greatly. It was a lot of fun. And it was very unique, a lot of cool functions, a lot of unique things to do, a lot of unique um, what are you doing? <sighs> or a lot of unique minifigures, a lot of great henchmen too. And then when Agent was done in 2009, Ultra Agents wouldn't see the light of day until five years later. I think maybe there's a little bit of a pattern here. No, almost. Ultra Agents had a lot of neat stuff, carried itself very well. All three of them have pretty unique color schemes. They match the espionage that they're going for while still looking very stylish. I mean, for goodness sake, Ultra Agents was so techy, you could basically make Tron out of it. In fact, you had a set that was like a three-wheeled Tron bike, or four-wheeled Tron bike in Fear No Inception. I enjoy that set a lot for the style, greebling, and a couple of the play functions, at least good consideration on them. So yeah, why not? And then Ultra Agents lasted into 2015. I've made some regretful decisions on getting rid of the Ocean HQ but I'm sure I will get it back someday. And I'm sure I will also look into the other sets of completing them. There's a lot of LEGO themes. I would. Here's the other thing, before we close out here. Um, like I said in the beginning, vote as you wish. Vote for what matters most to you between the LEGO themes if it grips you the most, if you think there's 
great potential for a 90th anniversary set, you know, something that really speaks to you or some idea of what that theme could offer for that kind of set. I've given a lot about my opinions in here and I have no idea if I'll actually make something of this. I think it'd be cool if I made mocks just to commemorate these themes in the way that I could see them, the way that I could imagine them being made. So going from that, I would say 2022 is not only a great year for LEGO, it's a great year for me. I'm going to be celebrating 10 years of Maniac 4 Bricks on YouTube. Consecutive, mind you. 10 years consecutively on YouTube as Maniac 4 Bricks. It's going to be a big year. I've been trying to plan for it since late 2020. Like the last quarter or so of 2020, I've already started making plans and arranging certain things to have ready for then. And I want it to be a big year almost all year long. It's probably going to be hard to top that in 20... What? It, the, the, what? The tw what would it be? 20th anniversary would be 2032? Yeah. 2032 is quite a ways away. And I don't know how I would top things in 2022... But that's assuming I'm still doing YouTube by that point. I have no idea. Nobody on this platform has been doing YouTube for more than 16, 17 something years. Nobody's reached 20 years on YouTube yet. YouTube itself hasn't reached 20 years, but it's close. So I am really curious as to what that would mean. But just know if I'm if I'm taking a bit longer on this year, but I want to make this year still good. I still want to I want to make the quality of videos outside of the streams good this year in preparation for next year. And next year, I want to make it big. I want to go into the Lego hobby and get things done. I might get things done throughout this year behind the scenes and make things really worthwhile. I That's that's why I'm hoping that everything gets better. I, I'm hoping everything gets better in general. But I would, I would be grateful. I would be ecstatic. If we could spend 2022 without without major illness, without major caution, without major pandemic, if if we could actually pull ourselves together, you know, as best as we can, put as much as we can into our our researchers and everybody trying to keep us alive that we can actually get out and be active, get to conventions, get to events, get to be amongst each other again, 2022 would be stellar. I could totally see writing off this year too. But next year, I want it to be big, if, if anything. The, the goal of this year is to make next year good. And this year's only just begun. So, um, without spoiling anything, thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed. We. Oh, <laughs> you realize how far over I was. Sorry. Oopsies. There we go. I'm sorry, I'm really tired now. I realized I was on this for three and a half hours. Um, 
I still have goals for this year that I want to get accomplished. I will update about those as soon as I can. Um, whether or not there's like conventions involved, whether or not there's, there's other priorities to take care of, but I will work through them as best as I can. So I want next year to be big. I'm gonna do whatever I can to plan for it to be big, to make myself through this year. And hopefully it's, uh, hopefully you're here for the ride. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will talk to you later. Have a good night. Take care. Peace, love, and fun.